to Uptown Rumble, Heavy Music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, Director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is May 24th, 2024, and very happy to be here for what will be uh, a really, really rich oral history, I'm sure. Um, Chuck, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. My name is actually Isaac Chucky Brown Galvan from the Boogie Down Bronx, born and raised in the Boogie Down Bronx. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Chucky, what, what instruments and, and bands you want to mention up front? We'll get more into it. But um, I started out playing um, first guitar. Okay. And, um, and then from guitar, I went on to bass. But when I started with guitar, um, I must have been like a good, uh, probably like good eight, nine years old. And at the time, I was living in Fulton, New York. And right across the street was this older dude that played guitar. And my mom's reached out to him and was like, hey, listen, um, you know, I have a kid that's into the, this rock music or whatever, and he wants to learn how to play. Um, and he was like, sure, no problem. And uh, uh, I went, took a couple of lessons, but he was more into like the folk stuff, um, you know, like uh, uh, Neil Young and stuff like that, Johnny Cash. And, you know, I just wanted to rock out, man. I wanted to play For some sure. heavy stuff. For sure. But uh, I would show up and stuff, and I really wouldn't get it down like that. Um, down the line, my mother bought me an acoustic, some toy, uh, something that I'm pretty sure she got at Toys R Us or whatever. But um, I had stopped going. But I, um, you know, I still kept playing when I would be in my room, the, the little uh, uh, acoustic guitar that my mom's had got me. Didn't know how to tune it or whatever. I, I just thought that was just to hold the strings. So I would just imitate whatever I saw at, you know, in the music videos and whatnot. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, uh, we'll get more into the bands that you've been a part of, you know, a little bit. But obviously Crazy Eddie, rapping Crazy Eddie. Yeah, man, got to rap, you know, shameless self-promotion and all that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and it's all good, you know what I'm saying? Any other bands you want to mention up front, we'll get more into them later. But yeah, I, I, I was, front. actually my first band was this band called uh, Out for Blood. And it was hardcore. And uh, the whole thing started was I went to a concert to go see Biohazard, Dog Eat Dog, and uh, Onyx, and I believe Clutch, if I'm not mistaken. And this was at the Academy venue, which is not there anymore. I believe is in, I have my notes here, guys. So, you know, I just want to make sure that I got my homework right and whatever just to get the right dates and whatnot. That show was actually on April 24, 1993. Wow, okay, okay. And um, also one, one of my favorite shows. There was a whole, it, it, it was like all out war. You had crews, you had metalheads, you had hip hop heads, because Onyx was there, and Onyx obviously is a rap group from Queens. And um, when I was in the mosh pit, there was always this one dude that, you know, he had this certain style about fall. That same dude, would, hey, I'll pick you. He picked, he picked me up. We'll be mosh and slamming. I'll bump, I'll bump into that same dude. I'll help him pick, you know, I'll pick him up or whatever. And it's funny because, uh, you know, usually you go to a club or whatever. You exchange numbers and it'll be with a chick or if it's a chick with a dude or whatever the case may be. And uh, we exchange numbers or whatever. And uh, that dude happened to be Rob who's the singer for Everybody Gets Hurt uh -huh. and Red Eye Devil. He was also the singer for Setback that features members of Billy Club Sandwich, uh -huh. Glenn. I know him as uh, Seaweed. And that was my first um, hardcore band. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's really cool. Um, and yeah, we're, yeah, I, I, I know that we're gonna, we're gonna get so much into, into a lot today. And also, it's worth mentioning before we even you know, get into things that uh, the Chucky has a lot of uh, show and tell items yeah, to bring yes, today. Some really cool ones. Yes, so, sir. Yes, um, sir. So yeah, uh, you, you know, for for folks who watch two or three minutes of the interview and and you know maybe maybe don't watch more, keep watching because Chucky's got some great. I got some items goodies, man. I got some goodies. That's right. So so let's take it back a little bit. Um, and why don't you share? whatever you know about your family history and background and how your family ended up in the Bronx. All right, it all started on my mother's side. Um, my mother's Puerto Rican and my father's Mexican. Uh 
uh, I believe my grandmother came sometime in the 60s. And when she came, uh, landed in the Bronx on Crimmins Street, between 141st and 142nd, towards like the backside of uh, St. Mary's Park. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, from there, uh, you know, my mother, she did, uh, uh, she, she went to a public school here, she went to junior high school, she went to high school as well. And then I believe from Crimmins, uh, they moved to, um, uh, what was it? Um, Hold on a second. Yes, I have it right sure. here. Uh, they went to uh, Southern Boulevard in 181st. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, well, Southern Boulevard in 181st. And then from there, she went to uh, she, she went to Mexico okay. with my dad in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Okay, okay. And she stood there for like a good year. Um, I believe they broke up, and then she ended up going back to 181st and Southern Boulevard. I yeah. see. I see. Do you know how your mom met? Your dad was it here in the Bronx where they met? Yeah, they met in the Bronx. There used to be this uh, movie theater yeah. on Southern Boulevard in Westchester and 163rd, I believe it was. Okay, okay, sure, sure And that sure. particular movie theater didn't give English movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. gave Spanish uh -huh. movies. It, it could have been drama, action, comedy, you name it. But it was all Latino, uh, Spanish-speaking movies. So... Every other weekend, my mother would go. She would go with my aunt and her cousins and whatnot. And on this one particular night, as she's sitting down, about to watch the movie, she looks back and she sees my dad winking at her and, you know, uh, saying all these little things like, hey, oye, linda, chula, you know, all these type of things. And my mother's like, you know, playing hard to get or whatever. And I believe my, my aunt said, you know, um, there's more room in the back. Why don't you sit in the back to my mother? And my mother, sure enough, she sat in the back, sat next to my dad. And, my, you know, my dad, you know, kicking game, kicking Willie Bobos, as they say, you know. <laughs> and sure enough, um, you know, exchanged numbers. And um, that's how I basically met at a Spanish movie theater in the Bronx. I think, I think it's Teatro Puerto Rico, I think is what it was really? called. Really? I'm not so. sure what's it, what it's called, but I know it was in Southern Boulevard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and this was uh, back in the early 70s. Yeah, yeah. Um, there were a few movie theaters right around there, but I think that one was the only Spanish language exclusively one. Um, but wow, that's really interesting. Uh, and when your mom came back to the Bronx, back to Southern Boulevard, 181st Street, is that where you um, grew up, like in, in that neighborhood? No, that I basically grew up, um, from there, she moved to Beach Avenue. And then I believe from Beach Avenue, we ended up leaving to Fulton, New York, which is upstate New York. Uh, Not too far from like Oswego, uh, maybe a half hour ride away from Syracuse yeah. and whatnot, Fulton, New York. And then from Fulton, New York, I went from Head Start to, I believe, the ending of second grade. Uh, okay. And uh, from the third grade and up, I was going to school in the Bronx. I see. Yeah. I see. So, did, did your mom know anyone in Fulton, New York? How did you all end up in Fulton, do you know? It was, I believe, we're, we're, I think it was only like two or three Puerto Rican, Latino families sure, that were yeah. living in Fulton, New York. Sure, yeah. the, the, the majority was all uh, Caucasian, if anything. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was to the point where I was the only Latino in the class, and they would think I, I, I'm black. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, uh, but it was cool. No, no, no type of racism like that. It would, and whatever, uh, I remember that time in Fulton, New York, um, you know, I, I would go bike riding and whatever. And, and that neighborhood where I lived at, it was a bunch of like, uh, people that would listen to rock music. Okay, so okay. I'll hear a lot of rock music at that time, which is considered classic rock now, uh -huh. you know? And, um, and I used to like it. Lucky for me, we were one of the uh, we were one of the ones that my mom's ended up getting cable, the old school cable that had like buttons, uh -huh. like a squelch kind of to get the a clear picture of the cable. Yeah. It was all buttons. It was like twenty buttons in a row, and it was like brownish. And we got MTV, uh, and that was during the time when MTV would give music videos. Not like now that they would give shows like Sixteen and Pregnant uh -huh. and all this crap. And uh, one of the first videos I remember watching would be stuff like Joan Jett, uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, Duran Duran, 
you know, of course, you would see the the Madonna stuff, Cindy Lauper, Lionel Richie, sure. Michael Jackson, and stuff like that. But then uh, one day, I remember watching a video by a band called Rat, uh -huh. and the song called uh, "Round and Round." And boy, did that catch my attention, man! I was like, "Whoa, what the hell is this?" And uh, from there, Quiet Riot. Twisted Sister, uh -huh. Motley Crue, ACDC, Def Leppard, and whatnot. Now, you know, the heavier, the better. And, and I was craving for it, you know, and um, and the rest is history from there. Wow, you know? wow. Yeah. So this was, this was all in Fulton, New York then? Like, yeah, in Fulton, New York. Yeah, this, yeah wow. I, was, uh, I was a young kid. Um, there was this one house where my grand, because my grandparents ended up moving out there as well. Okay. And let's rewind a little bit. Yes, sir. I was like a good six, seven years old. Yeah. And me and my older sister, for some reason, we were throwing stones and rocks into the highway. Yeah. And I remember one car pulled over and this chick came out and was like, uh, where's your parents? But I think, no, no, I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. I'm here throwing rocks with my older sister. And I was like, yeah, she's um, in the front porch. Can I speak with her? I'm like, no problem. She went, told my mom that me and my sister were throwing rocks out into the highway or whatever. <laughs> Got in trouble and my mother sent me to the attic. Uh -huh. So I went to the attic. And in the attic, my grandmother had a record player. Okay. So I went up to the record player and I started going through some records or whatever. And I found this one particular 7-inch 45 record. And on the record, it had like a little logo of a tongue sticking out. Uh -huh. What the hell is this? So I put the little 45 adapter. It was like yellow, the little thing that you put in the middle. Uh -huh. The 45 adapter, I put it on, and I hear, and it was uh, Rolling Stones. Uh -huh. I must have listened to that record that night like a good, maybe a good hundred times. Wow. Back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. I fell in love with it. So the main thing was the Rolling Stones uh -huh. that really started it for me. As wow. far as for rock music in a whole, as a whole, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. And and as you mentioned at the beginning, you you started playing guitar around this time. Right, too. right, 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 um, right. Wow. So, you you talked a little bit about you know your elementary school experience at at Fulton. It, is there anything else you want to share about that before we go back to the Bronx? Um, you know, it was cool going to little school trips and whatnot, whatever. Um. Uh, what you I mean, it was cool. I had fun. Went from head start to uh second grade and um but you know I had fun, it was cool. Yeah. But when I got to the Bronx boy it was a whole different ball game. A whole different ball game. What what neighborhood in the Bronx did you all move to? Uh back? and on East one eightieth and Arthur Avenue. Oh, oh okay. East one eightieth and Arthur Avenue. Yes. I see. I lived like a, a block away from the motorcycle MC, uh, the Chingalings. The Chingalings, Which is right. on Hughes. That's right. Because I remember at times when I would go to my grandmother, because my grandmother also lived on that same building. On the fourth floor, I lived on the second floor. Uh -huh. So at times when I would go to my grandmother's house, I'll be chilling like on the fire skate, drinking the 25 cent quarter water juices, uh -huh. eating sunflower seeds. I would hear rock music. I'm like, where the hell is that music coming from? But like really loud, coming from the Hughes Avenue uh, section. See. And it was the Chinglings, they would put a big ass speaker on their fire escape in a building they renovated themselves. And they'll be playing stuff like Thin Lizzy, uh -huh. ACDC, Scorpions, and stuff like that, Mortarhead. And I'll be hearing this music coming from wow. Hughes Avenue and I'm like yo you know and there wasn't no uh, uh, Google where you could be like of course, you know, Google yeah, what's yeah, this yeah. or whatever you know and um, it was cool because I'm like whoa you know rock music in the Bronx coming from the motorcycle <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> so yeah it was cool but uh, yeah it was on Arthur Avenue East 180 okay yeah okay wow wow uh, and what elementary school did you go to when you came back to the Bronx I went to CS 57 that's located on East 180th and Cortona Avenue. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I went from the third grade there to the fifth grade. I see, I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. And, uh, and what was that school like compared to Fulton 
elementary school that you went to? I was one of those kids that I was quiet at first. I always would be drawing and doing little and doing graffiti uh, to myself. And then later down the line, I started um, I started I started becoming friends with all the bad boys. <laughs> You know, so I would always get get away with certain shit or whatever. You know, like if I was to throw paper, like we tend, and the kid next to me will always, you know, be the one getting in trouble or whatever. But um, yeah, it, it was cool. I had fun. Um, in CS fifty seven, I was actually uh, I, I saw my first concert because of that school on a school trip. Wow! And that was to see a jazz uh, musician by the name of. Uh, Lionel Hampton. Oh yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah, I believe he died around two thousand in the early two thousands, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's a percussionist and a vibraphonist, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah is what you call it? Yeah. yeah. And a band leader, and I got to see him. I believe it was the Lincoln Center. Okay. So that would actually would be my first music concert wow. to see Lionel Hampton. Wow. That's yeah, cool. and that was because of CS fifty seven on I a school see. trip. I see. Yeah. Wow. And were there other kids at, at the school who, like, were into the, you know, similar kinds of music that you were No, at everybody time? was all into uh, hip-hop. Yeah, yeah. Hip-hop, hip-hop, hip-hop. Everybody was into hip-hop. Some of the girls were into, uh, like, freestyle. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure, freestyle sure, sure, music. Sure, sure. But rage. more of that was when I went to junior high school. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, all the kids were all into, like, hip-hop music, hip-hop yeah. and rap music. That was, like, the main thing in yeah. public school. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, yeah. sure. And you mentioned the, the chingalings and, and the sound of rock coming from them in the neighborhood. Um, but what are some of the things you heard, you know, on the street in your neighborhood, other things you heard that you remember growing up? That, that time was so cool, man, because people, you know, they'll be blasting music out their window. You hear uh -huh. it in the cars passing by with the booming system. You know, the drug dealers in the, in the corner bodegas and uh -huh. whatnot. And you will hear a lot of, uh, of course, hip-hop rap. Of course, yeah. Um, that's number one. You hear a lot of salsa. Sure, sure. Of course, the merengue and the bachata. Absolutely. But ma the majority is salsa yeah. when it yeah. comes to Latin music. Uh, freestyle. Yeah. You'll listen to a, a lot of freestyle. A lot of freestyle. Um, house music. Uh -huh. A lot of house music. Um, of course, the reggae sure. and stuff like that. But the majority was hip-hop, freestyle, uh, salsa, and uh, pretty much about it. Not really too much rock yeah, like that. Yeah, sure. Just you know? the jinglings, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did have a neighbor, though. He was older. I, I was young, but he was, like, already in his 20s. And I remember him. I had, like, a... I think it was a Def Leppard t-shirt. And he saw that I was wearing Def Leppard. Hey, you listen to Heavy Metal Rock? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, yo, I got a couple of records. You, you want to check out? I was like, sure. So he brought over a bunch of records one day and... uh and I'm going through them, and it was a lot of like uh, glam rock hair metal stuff. I see, I see, I see. You know, like Cinderella, sure. um, uh, uh, Winger, uh -huh. and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, damn, I gotta put this guy into some harder stuff. Because <laughs> already at that age, I was listening to like thrash. Okay. And punk. Okay, wow. I discovered that stuff early at a young age. Yeah. So then I started making him copies uh. of stuff like uh, Nuclear Slow, wow. Slayer, Wasp. Wow. And, and stuff like that. And I give it him, he's like, whoa, you're into this stuff? Holy crap. I thought this was baggy stuff. Mind you, he was in his 20s. He was yeah. older than me. Yeah. And I was like 11, 12 years old. Wow. You know? Yeah. How, how'd you get turned on to some of the heavy stuff at such a young age? Like, um, you, how'd you find it? Do you remember? So, uh, so my grandfather had a garage. I had a garage that was right next to the building where I lived at on Arthur yeah. Avenue. Yeah. And... I think one of the guys that would bring in his car to get fixed, sometimes he would leave cassettes laying around in the car. And sometimes I would be hanging out with my grandpops, you know, in the garage or whatever, just hanging out. And sometimes I'll get in the car, maybe turn I'm driving or whatever. And when I look down, I'll, sometimes I'll find like, these cassettes. Yeah. And I remember one time I found an MOD cassette, uh. which is... Uh, uh, Billy Milano from of SOD course. yeah, and whatever and it was USA for MOD so I'm, I'm checking it out Ooh, the, the cover looks cool you know Sergeant D he looks there all paid, like looking like Uncle Sam and shit yeah. so I went home popped it in because it was in cassette and I'm like whoa what the hell is this this is fucking badass you know this is not you know like like rat and 
poison. Because I was also into like the glam rock hair metal stuff too. Sure, That's sure. how I started, you know. Sure. And um, I would find these tapes or whatever. And uh, what you might call it. Um, I would also, you know, listen to the radio, MTV. At that time, there was a station, 89.1 called Crucial Chaos. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And uh, they would give a lot of, like, more hardcore, hardcore punk, punk rock, sometimes even oi uh -huh. music. And I would grab my cassette, because I was always doing that anyway with the other radio stations when I would listen to, like, uh, 98.7 KISS, uh -huh. WBLS. And on weekends, they would give more uh, hip-hop rap music. So it would be, like, DJ Red Alert. I uh, see, yeah. Mr. Magic, DJ Chuck Chill Out. Uh -huh. And what I would do is I would record it. And when I would know a commercial would come out, I would pause it. Uh -huh. And then I'll pause it when the commercial will be over. And I'll kind of like blend it in to make it seem like I never recorded it from the radio. Wow. I'll make sure I'll have good reception. I'll put the antenna where I'll get good reception. Sometimes add a little bit of uh, aluminum foil uh -huh. or whatever. And I would record these shows off the radio. Uh, it all started with like the 98.7 Kiss FM, you know, uh, recording uh, the hip hop stuff. Sure. And then it moved on to when I started discovering uh, uh, rock stations, yeah. if not these uh, 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 college stations that would play a lot of the underground stuff. I see. Wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. So you were deep into it from. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I even found an AM station that would give rock, more hair metal, glam rock stuff. Yeah. And it was. Uh, 1480 AM Z Rock, okay, Z Rock 1480, wow, wow. and it was on the AM station. Wow! So you would kind of hear like hear that little fuzz because yeah, yeah. AM is not as clear as FM. Yeah, and they would give all like glam rock, hair metal stuff. Wow! 2407. Wow. I think the heaviest stuff they would play would be like Metallica. I see. Would I be see. like the heaviest stuff they would play. I see. Yeah. Well, so so what uh, junior high did you go to? In junior high school, I went to, uh, it was on Prospect in East Tremont, Whitney M. Young, IS-193. I see, I see, I see, I see. And I went from 6th to the, from the 6th to the 8th grade, and I, uh, all throughout the whole school, it was just maybe two other metalheads. Oh, okay, I there. see, I see. Two other metalheads, and... One of the two, I became real, real good friends that I'm still to. Uh, I'm still uh, friends with him to this day, and his name is uh, Jorge Vasquez, George Vasquez. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah George yeah, Vasquez. Sure, sure, sure. And um, it was. I, I remember it was. It was uh, I think I had like a Metal Edge, Hip Parader, maybe Rip Magazine that I brought into school, and I'm looking at it, and he was. I think he was sitting by me, and he peeped over, and um. Hey man, uh, you listen to heavy metal? I was like, yeah, dude. Oh yeah. It was really oh cool, cool man. Um, maybe you should stop by my house. I don't, I don't live too far from here, and um, I listen to that stuff too. And maybe we could uh, listen to some music together or whatever. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know, but I, I ain't think because he didn't look it. He looked yeah. like just a regular Puerto Rican kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And I go to his house, and. Boy, uh, he put me on to some stuff that I didn't hear before, like uh, like thrash metal and, and, and death metal. Wow. He put me on to stuff like obituary. Okay. Uh, death, more of the harder stuff. Sure, sure, You sure. know, that I didn't know. And then the stuff that uh, he didn't know, I put him on to. Uh, I see. And uh, he had an older sister that went to Clinton High School. Uh -huh. And she was a metalhead herself. And she would hang out with a bunch of other metalheads, including her high school sweetheart. Shout out to Wanda Vasquez and her husband, Joe. Uh -huh. And George would also listen to stuff that his sister would listen to. Nice. She was a lot into the glam uh, hair metal, but uh, she would also, you know, to the basic stuff like uh, the Testament, sure. the Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer. And then that's why he picked up on the harder stuff from his older sister. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Wow. So shout out to uh, George Vasquez. Wow. Um, yeah. And were you, what, what was your like guitar playing evolution like at this point in time? Were you still? I wasn't crazy? even, no, I wasn't even jamming out in okay. junior high school. I see. 
you know, I was into a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Like, even we wind that, I remember, you know, as a kid out in the street, this is even before, you know, of course, the social media stuff. Yeah. You know, playing red light, green light, uh-huh. kick the can, manhunt, uh, freeze tag, scalzies. Uh-huh. And all that stuff, and when you're chilling at home, Nintendo, uh-huh. you know, and all that stuff. Um, uh, I remember even running after school. I think uh, at three thirty or four o'clock, they used to give this show on UHF. It was more of a hip hop show yeah. called Video Music Box. Oh, sure, so sure. I would run after school, have my VCR ready with a blank videotape to record certain hip hop videos that um, I used to love uh-huh. from this show called Video Music Box. You know, Big Daddy Kane, of course. Boogie Down Productions. Biz, Biz Marquis, uh, uh, Kooji Rap, Salt and Pepper, um, Queen Latifah, uh-huh. and all that stuff. And I would make myself little compilations of videotapes with all these hip hop rap videos, and also would have all these uh, uh, videotapes with all the rock metal stuff. I see. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That I would make myself and trade, lend to, to to my friends and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that was cool. Wow, so you you were you were documenting everything. Oh yeah, everything, absolutely, bro. man, absolutely, man, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, but I kind of got inspired from my mom because my mother, what she would do is, there was always music um, in my house. Yeah, always music. Uh, at the time when I was living in Fulton, New York, and I was young, my mother would, uh, you know, of course she would be playing the salsa, merengue, bachata stuff. Sure. But she was also into pop, mostly of the '80s pop. Yeah. You know, like uh, Culture Club, Lionel Richie, Chaka Khan, Tina Turner, Michael Jackson, uh, uh, Pointer Sisters, uh-huh. Donna Summer. She was also big into uh, disco and stuff like that. So she will always have music playing in the house, whether she's cleaning the house, cooking. Um, even when we go to bed, she will have the music, but, you know, real low. So there was always music playing in my house. Wow. Uh, fast forward. Uh, I remember she had bought a home stereo system when it used to be the record player on top, yeah. the receiver, the equalizer, uh-huh. the double cassette, and then the bottom, that's where you could put the vinyls. Yeah. So my mother would make compilations on whatever was on and popping at that time for salsa, then she would make her own little compilation, and she would name it Salsa Number One. Uh-huh. And she would put it like a nice tape deck on the wall in the living room. And then the next season, whatever was on and popping, Salsa number two. Wow. You make a little compilation. Same thing for bachata. Same thing for merengue. So as I started growing up, I was like, you know what? I want to start doing that. Wow. But with the music that I like. So then I started making compilations for myself. For glam rock hair metal, volume number one. Uh-huh. For thrash metal, volume number one. For hardcore, volume number one. For punk rock, volume number one. So I kind of got inspired from my mother and I started doing the same thing within my little collection of tapes that I had. Wow. Do you, do you still have any of those compilations? Uh, I don't have any of those compilations, but I still do have cassettes and CDs that uh, that I got into. For sure. example, I have some stuff here. When I first heard this, I don't know if oh, you guys yes. can see it with the glare. Yeah, yeah, you can. you can. When I first heard this, which is the first Black Sabbath, I was like, what the hell am I listening to? I remember when I popped it on and I heard the intro to the first track, opening track, you know, with like church bells and thunder. And I thought Nosferatu was going to pop out of my fucking fire escape and shit. And I'm like, yo, what the hell is this, man? And I fucking fell in love with it. And um, I just couldn't stop listening to it, man. And I want, I just wanted more and I wanted more. More evil shit, more more heavier shit. Um, I was lucky that um, with my allowance money, whenever my mother would go out and buy records, I would tag along. Uh-huh. And sometimes uh, with my allowance money, I would always buy a hip-hop rap cassette or CD and a rock heavy metal cassette uh-huh. CD. So, for example, if I was to go to, like, let's say, Crazy Eddie on Fordham Road. Uh-huh. There used to be a Crazy Eddie on Fordham Road. And I would go down, you go downstairs, and I would buy me a Quiet Riot record. So I got my rock, oh, Fat Boys. Uh-huh. I'll get me a Fat Boys record. Then the next day, I'll get me a Slick Rick record. 
and then I'll go get me Twisted Sister uh -huh. record. I'll go back again. I'll get me a Metallica record, you know, hip hop record or whatever. So it was always like that. Even going back, uh, rewind, my dad, uh, actually my stepfather, he would order through uh, Columbia House. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Through sure. Columbia House. And he would let me uh, order two cassettes. And at that time, I was like, you know, six, seven years old. And my thing was like uh, Jackson 5. I see. And of yeah, course, yeah. the Rolling Stones. Um, sure. Um, I did like Beatles and Kiss, but that came a little bit later. Yeah. But um, at that time, it was more uh, the, the, glam, the glam rock, hair metal stuff. That, and I would order through, um, uh, which more, like, through the Columbia House. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'll get stuff like cool, uh, cool in the Gang. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, New Edition, Chaka Khan, St uh, 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 Stevie Wonder, uh -huh. uh, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and that's pretty much how I used to get my, uh, my music. Yeah, yeah. And so... Do you remember, you mentioned Crazy Eddie in the Bronx. What are some other um, record stores that you would go to? Uh, in the Bronx, the there used to be a place called um, Beat Street. Ah, uh, Beat Street, sure, Beat sure. Street. Um, and then later on, it changed to, I believe, Music Factory. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. is now, I believe, I don't know if it's Burger King or Dr. J's or... Maybe a mini Target there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm yeah, not mistaken, yeah. it was on Fordham Road. On Fordham I would go to B right. Street. I would go to uh, Tower Records in Yonkers. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. I'll sure. hop on the 20 bus and Bedford Park in Jerome, and the 20 bus will go all straight to uh, Central Avenue. Uh -huh. And I would go to Tower Records. I would also go to Tower Records because Tower Records would have a, a Ticketmaster. Uh -huh. It's not like now that you can get one on your phone and you get tickets. You would have to physically go there to get uh, physical tickets. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in Tower Records, they had a, a ticket master. And whatever I didn't find in Tower Records, there was a, a small little indie record shop called Rock and Rex in Yonkers. It was right down the block from a Roosevelt High School that was in, high, in Yonkers. Oh, a Roosevelt in Yonkers. Yeah, okay, yeah. I believe yeah, I it see. was uh, Tuckahoe Road. Okay, 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 okay. But I found out about Rock and Rex through the Crucial Chaos radio show that I would listen to on 89.1. I see. Because I believe a lot of the records that the disc jockeys would play there, they would get from Rock and Rex. Because uh -huh. they would always shout out Rock and Rex on the, on the radio station and the show. And I think, I think they had some live shows there. Yeah, they right? also had live shows. I would go to some of their live shows. I believe the Casualties played there. Wow. Uh, I believe without a cause, uh -huh. which um, my one of my bandmates, Lenny B, he, you know, he played in without a cause. That's right. I believe they played in, in Rock and right. Rex as well. Yeah. Uh, Awkward Thought played there. Awkward Thought and that band is uh, John Franco, uh -huh. who's the bass player in No Redeeming Social uh -huh. Value. Uh -huh. Who in No Redeeming Social Value, the drummer Glenn oh, from Billy Club Sandwich plays in that band as well. Right. John Franco also used to work at Rock and Rex Records. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. And he also runs Dead City Records oh, as Dead well. Oh, Dead City Records. Too. Yes, okay, John Franco. Sure. So shout out to John Franco. Yeah. Wow. Um, so as far as high school goes, you went to Roosevelt, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I went to Roosevelt High School on Fordham Road. Uh, also, I was born in Fordham Hospital. Oh, you were born in Fort Yeah, I was Hospital. born at Fort Hospital, oh, okay, which okay. I think is maybe R. Fordham R. University. It's like, I think the parking garage. Maybe. The parking lot of, of Fordham University, yeah, yeah, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, I was born on Fort, uh, Fordham Hospital. I went to Roosevelt High School. Well, one cool thing about Roosevelt High School, it was a shitload of metalheads. I know. A little <laughs> clique of metalheads that later on, uh, uh, be, you know, formed bands, yeah, became bands right. and whatnot. I went to high school with Louis. From uh, Go to Mensis, uh -huh. the bass player of Go to Mensis. I went to high school with uh, Gio from Demised. Uh -huh. I went to high school with Joel. Joel played in a band at that time called Fatal Blessing. And later on, he played with Close Call, uh -huh. which Close Call turned into District 9. Uh -huh. We'll get into that later on. I went to high school also with George Vasquez, who I went to junior high school with. Uh -huh. Shout out to George Vasquez. I went to high school with also Gerson, 
who later on formed a thrash metal band with these two other guys from Queens called Warcraft. Warcraft, that's Yeah, right. so shout out to Gerson Ortiz, I believe is his last name. Also went to high school with Danny Cabrera. Danny Cabrera was in a band called Dead Season mm-hmm. and was also in a band called Seizure Crypt. Also went to high school with, uh, who else, man? It was a bunch of uh, cats. There was these two metalhead uh, Latino dudes. There, uh, I believe they were El Salvadorian. When Gio did his uh, interview, he spoke about that. Yes, yes, yes. Which is where he, uh, one of the brothers, we, we used to call them the Culero brothers. Okay, okay. Because the, they were always saying, uh-huh. Yete Culero. <laughs> so we used to call them the Culero brothers. And um, it was Juan Carlos and Albert. They went to Roosevelt High School as well. Wow. Uh, there was another metalhead, uh, African American metalhead by the name of Markel. Okay. And I believe Markel played in Fatal Blessing with Joel. Uh-huh. Joel, who played in Close Call drums. Uh-huh. Who else? Uh, damn, am I missing anybody else, man? Oh, and I went to high school with this kid named Robert. I believe his last name is Ramos. Uh, Ramos. Robert is one of the guys that helped run Mulali BMX yes, Park. Yes, 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 that's right. Yes. Rob Ramos, that's Yeah, right. Rob Ramos. I went to high school with him as wow. well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And was, was he a metalhead in high school? Yeah, he was a metalhead, okay. quiet. And I remember in the lunchroom, Rob would always draw like these superheroes, mostly like Spider-Man. Yeah. Rob was a lot into thrash and death metal. Uh-huh. Real quiet, shy kid. But mad cool and funny at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, and then later on years, uh, fast forward in the mid-90s, um, when I started going to Mulali, uh, Mulali BMX Park, I see him there, working there and whatnot. And uh, but yeah, I went to high school with Rob, man. Shout out to Robert. Wow. Yeah, wow. man. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Um, and what, what kinds of music were you listening to at the time as far as metal goes or if you've gotten very much into hardcore yet well in high school it was all about hardcore Uh metal and when I say metal I'm talking about thrash metal of course death metal Uh speed metal uh, progressive metal just metal as a whole I really wasn't too much into black metal sure the most extreme music that I got into as far as for metal was like grindcore death metal and grindcore I see you know listening to bands like uh what you call it? Um, Napalm Death. Napalm like Death. That. Obituary. Yeah. Uh, sore Throat. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, damn, man. My, my, my mind is like shot right now. Uh, punk Rock. When I first heard this. Ah, uh, yes. I was yes. like, holy shit. Uh-huh. Holy shit. Which I got to see them. But we'll get into that later oh, on. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I was also into ska music. Okay. Yeah, I sure. loved ska. Sure. Um, I was really big into uh, oi. Uh-huh. Oi music in high school. Um, but the majority of the metalheads, they were more into like metal. I see. I see. In, in, in Roosevelt. It was more into uh, metal. And so you had a little more, I guess, wide, wider taste than... Yeah, yeah. And, and in high school, we were tape trading. Uh Lending CD, uh, CDs out yeah. or whatever. And it's funny because each metalhead, like, I remember first meeting uh, Louis, the bass player of Go to Memphis. Uh-huh. I remember I was going down the stairs and I hear somebody coming down the stairs. Boom! 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 And he passes right by me and he was, he looked like a Puerto Rican Sid Vicious. <laughs> like, who the fuck is this guy? He had an MC jacket. With anarchy, fuck you, six x six and spiky hair and shit. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Which later on down, you know, I got to uh, I got to meet him and, and whatever. Uh, what you gonna call it? But the shit was the lunchroom. In the lunchroom, all of us would get together and whatever. But I was lucky enough to uh, have a music class in Roosevelt. Shout out to uh, Mr. Tamasulu, Michael Tamasulu, uh, and in music. That's where I picked up the bass guitar. Uh, when I was a freshman uh, in high school, I picked up the bass guitar. I pretty much learned how to play bass in high school. I see. Through Mr. Tamasulu, the music teacher. Wow. And what was cool was that he was a lot into classic rock. Uh-huh. So a lot of the music that he would teach us playing 
would be a lot of classic rock music. I see. Yeah. I see. Wow. Yeah. And I remember we would play uh, Hey Joe from Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. House of the Rising Sun from The Animals. Uh-huh. Satisfaction from The Rolling Stones. Uh, what else we would play? Uh, we'll play a, a bunch of stuff. Um, my first show was actually in Roosevelt High School, oh, okay. playing with a band. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. my okay. first show was in Roosevelt High School. Um, and was it was this the band that you mentioned that, at the very beginning? Or, or this no, band? no, oh, this okay. was just um, the guys that I would uh, have uh, music class with. I see, I see. I see. Um, we played in the, in the auditorium, and we played one original, this song that I had wrote called Buck Wild, uh-huh. and then we played like three covers, I believe. And it was Danny Cabrera on guitar, Danny who played in Deep, uh, uh, Dead Season, and uh-huh. he played in Seizure Crypt, George Vasquez on drum, George Vasquez played with Close Call, and in Out for Blood with me, and me on bass, and this other guy called, uh, what was his name, Nathaniel, we called him Nate, Nat, yeah. he was on vocals, and we did uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit from Nirvana, uh-huh. Enter Sandman from Metallica. Wow. And I think, uh, well, it was another song we did. But we also played with the whole music class. I see. And I when see. we played with the whole music class, we did the, uh, 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 who sh- I, I shot the sheriff from uh, Bob Marley, of Satisfaction of uh, Rolling Stones, and Hey Joe from, uh, uh, Jimmy from Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And House of the Rising Sun from the Animals. I see. With the whole band. I yeah. see. And Mr. Thomas, uh, Mr. Thomas Sula was cool enough to let us play those other three songs, just us wow. four guys. Wow. Yeah. People were throwing chalk at us, paper, and shit, but we didn't give a fuck. We just kept playing and shit. We were having fun. So that was my first show playing with a band in front of an audience. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what about your first, um, you know, metal or hardcore uh, show like going to see? Well, besides the Lionel Hampton yeah. show that I went to when I was like in the third grade, yeah. my first real metal show was the Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah, Anthrax, okay. Megadeth, that Slayer, is, and I yeah, think Alice in Chains. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, Alice in Chains, too. Motherfuckers are throwing jumping jacks, firecrackers, M80s. I think while Slayer or Megadeth was playing. Tearing up the... Yeah, they were tearing up the fucking seats and shit. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm having a fucking great time. It was fucking great, man. Yeah, this was in the early 90s, 92. I remember, I believe that same day, I went to a meet and greet autograph signing at HMV Record Store to see Slayer. Because I remember bringing my CD, m- meeting all the members in the band, including Rest in Peace, Jeff Henneman, yeah. the guitarist, and I got my Seasons in the Abyss Slayer CD uh, uh, autographed. Wow. And I believe it was that same day or the day after of that uh, Clash of the Titans uh, show at Madison Square Garden. That was my first uh, metal show. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I, yeah, it, it was a great show, man. I know. That's what it sounds like. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Um, and do you remember what was the first, um, you know, Bronx band that you heard of? And, like, around what what year or so was Okay, it? so that I might have to look at my notes because that was at the Chippewa Club. Ah, the Chippewa in Club. West, uh-huh. In uh, Westchester Square yeah, by, Westchester Lehman, Square. by, by right. Lehman High School. That's right. The Chippewa uh, Club, that was actually the Metal Madness One show, uh-huh. which was in 1992. I see. And the Metal Madness Two was at the church, I guess, yes. later on. Right? We'll get into that. But let's uh, first get into the Chippewa Yeah, yeah, let's show. get into that. At the Chippewa show, it was Warcraft. Uh-huh. I went to high school with the drummer, Gerson, Without a Cause. Which features Lenny, my bandmate in Crazy Eddie. Uh huh. Rampage, shout out to Joe Rampage. And Joint Effort. Joint Effort was Puerto Rican Mike on vocals. Okay. I believe Frank from Fahrenheit 451 on guitar. Okay, okay. Ray Maloon, the drummer of Without a Cause, on drums. And I don't think they had a bass player that night. I 
I see. And they went by the name of joint effort. Joint as in. Of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, joint effort. Um, great freaking show. That was actually one of my first shows in of maybe even hardcore. Yeah. In 1992. And uh, that was my first time seeing like Latinos uh -huh. into punk, into oi, into metal. Uh, and African Americans, you know, all in one. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, holy shit, this is this is awesome. That show I got to uh to video. I got video footage of that show. Yeah. I got video footage of Rampage. I got video footage of Warcraft from that show. And without a cause. Wow. I got video incredible. uh footage of that show. And um the whole Bronx was there, man. Everybody and their mother was at that show. I remember when I went to that show, I went with Barry from Go to Mentis, uh -huh. and I went with George Vasquez that played with me in Out for Blood, and George Vasquez also played in Close uh, uh, Close Call. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Had you yeah. videotaped any any other shows before then? Um, what what led you to you know get the idea to videotape it? I think that was one of the first shows I taped, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Because then after that, of course, I got the Metal Madness. Two show, and the Metal Man is two show was in I believe 1993, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah it was on May 1st of 1993 at St. Paul's Church, which was on Cortona between 179th and Tremont Avenue. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, and at that show was uh, who was at that show? I gotta look into my oh, notes yeah, again. Oh, yeah, look, look, that's uh, great. Angry at the World, uh -huh. Close Call, Mindset, Super Dupa, which I believe had members of Rampage. Okay, okay. And Without a Cause. I see, wow. Played that night. Wow. Great freaking show. I remember on that show, uh, uh, Close Call, which later became uh, uh, District 9. Uh, that's, the first, that's the first time I met Puerto Rican Mike, by the way. Ah, I see. Close Call did two covers. But the two covers that they did was not even of uh, of hardcore music yeah. or even metal. Yeah. They did, um, uh, there's this house, uh, house music. There's a group called Two in a Room and Two Without Hats. Uh -huh. And they used to do Latin house music. Uh -huh. And they had a song that went... Um, Esa loca, esa loca, dale huevo, with Wepa Man. Yeah. Close Call did a hardcore version of that that night at Metal Madness oh, 2. Please. The <laughs> crowd went nuts, stage diving, marching. <laughs> esa loca, <laughs> la mujer la llamo, la llevo, fua. I was like, what the fuck is this? That's insane. Yeah, wow. man, fucking shout out to Close Call, yeah. That show, Joel, that I went to high school with, he was on drums, uh, Puerto Rican Mike on vocals, uh, and uh, Che and Carlos, I believe, are their names. Is it Che and Carlos? Is that their names? Yeah, Che and Carlos. I, 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 my bad if I'm forgetting the names, uh, which I'm calling Played That Night as well. Um, Morbidon, great band, great death metal band. Yeah. Shout out to Tony, uh, Tony Morbidon. Shout out to Michael, the drummer. They they played that night. Uh, great, great, great freaking band. I'm real cool friends with uh, Tony, uh, Tony Morbidon. Tony Morbidon is the singer, bass player. His name is Jesus. And Jesus uh, came out in a Biohazard video. Oh, really? Okay. Not sure if it's Tales on the Hearts, Hearts Side or Five Blocks to the Subway. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jesus is the cousin of Tony Morbidon, and he came out in one of those Biohazard videos. I'm not sure if it's Tales on the Hearts Side or Five Blocks to the Subway. One of those two. Wow. Yeah. And, and the, the guys in Morbidon, they were from the Bronx? Too. Yeah, they were from the Bronx, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Rampage played that night. Rest in peace to his guitar player, Mike Bonilla. And rest in peace to their bass player, uh, what was his name? Uh, oh, man. I forgot his name. Freddie. Freddie Freddy. used to play in a band called the Kilowatts. The Kilowatts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Puerto yeah. Rican Mike 
has mentioned that. Before. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, the drummer was Tony. Tony, shout out to Tony. Tony was Gerson that I went to high school with. Gerson was the drummer in Warcraft. Tony was his drum teacher. Ah. Yeah, he played that night at uh, the Metal Madness uh, 1 and 2. Yeah, they oh, played okay. Metal yeah, Madness 1 and 2. Yeah, the only difference was that Metal Madness 1, Loki was on bass. I yeah, see. Yeah, I see. Loki was on bass. Right, and then bass the first. And right. The first. And then Metal Madness 2, Freddy, rest in peace, played bass. I see. Right. I yeah. see. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mike Bonilla is also my bandmate because Mike Bonilla played with me in Out for Blood uh, with Rob from Everybody Gets Hurt, uh -huh. who was the singer, and with George Vasquez, who was the drummer. I see. Yes, Mike Bonilla, rest in peace. I see. And w when did you start Out for Blood? This was, I want to say, 93, 94. Okay. We were together for like a year. I see. Yeah. So me and Rob who I met at that Biohazard Onyx show. Yeah. Um, we got together, and it's funny, man, because he would come all the way from Queens. Wow. And at that time, I'm, I was living on University Avenue between West 190th and Kingsbridge. I see, I see, I see. And he would pick me up. Then we would pick up George, who lived right across the street from the Metal Madness 2 show okay. on Cretona Avenue. Uh -huh. And then from there, we would go practice at Music Unlimited. I see. Which was on uh, East Chester? Yeah, or East Chester we, Road. Yeah. yeah, on East Chester Road, and right off of Pullen Parkway. Yeah, yeah. And we would uh, we would uh, rehearse there. Wow. Yeah, and I remember. Uh, I think our only show we had was at the Blue Frog, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is by by the last stop of the four train on uh, Woodlawn. Uh huh. Yeah, the Blue Frog. That's right. And we got that gig through uh, Ch Chango Productions, which was uh, Rocky and this other guy who worked at uh, Bronin's. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Rocky was like, a, he looked like a biker, but he was more of a blues guy. I see, I see, I see. And the Blue Frog was like a blues club, uh -huh. like a blues bar. I see. And I remember because... On the top, they had like these two stone frogs yeah. that were like blue. You know how they have like the gargoyles yeah, yeah, yeah. inside of buildings? It was like these two frogs wow. on top of the building, like blue. Huh. And it was more of a jazzy blues club. And that particular night when we played there, I believe it was, uh, shout out to Driven by Hatred. It was Driven by Hatred, uh, Go to Mentis. Uh-huh. And uh, it's another band, man. I, I don't remember. And we played that show, and it was uh, George Vasquez on drums, me on bass, David on uh, lead guitar, Mike Bonilla, rest in peace, on rhythm guitar, and Rob on vocals. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was, I guess that was your second time performing live. Then, yeah, right? and that was like in, uh, that show was in 94, I want to yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 94. Wow. Yeah, at the, at the, at the infamous Blue Frog. I, I think I think that, I don't I don't know if I've heard of other, you know, metal or hardcore shows at that. It might have been the only. I think that was the there. only show. Yeah. yeah, I think that was the only, maybe another one. Yeah. But I think that was the only show. Um, that particular show when Go To Mensis played, Martin from Billy Club Sandwich was the vocalist. That's right. That's right. And they had this other guitar player, rest in peace, uh, Milton, yeah, Milton, played guitar, and Rendon was playing guitar at the time, too. Uh -huh. And I believe Frankie was on drums. Yeah. Frankie's also my ex-bandmate, because later after Out for Blood, I was playing with a punk band called The Wasted, uh -huh. and Frankie played drums in The Wasted as well. That's right. That's right. And he was doing double duty, I think, right? Both yeah, during that time, he had go to Mantis and then down the line, driven by hatred. So he had he had to end up leaving the Wasted. So then that's when we recruited uh, Adam. I believe his last name is Fatchler. Adam Fatchler. Yeah, yeah. On drums. I see, yeah. I see, I see. Um, so what, what were some of the other venues that you ended up playing at um, in the Bronx? Did you play any others with your first band or... Well, fast forward after Out for Blood, uh, 
me and this Portuguese uh, kid that I knew who lived on Tremont Avenue right off of Grand Concor uh, right off of Grand Concourse. Shout out to Rui. He was a lot into uh, punk rock. I see. And me and him hit it off real, real quick because at that time I was a skinhead at that oh, time. Okay, okay, sure. And there was a lot into punk rock and oi. Yeah. Punk rock and oi. That was like my shit. Yeah, I liked my my metal and hard and, and hardcore, but at that time I was a lot into uh, oi and punk. Uh huh. And so me and Rui, we decided to do something different. Everybody was forming metal and hardcore bands. That's right. And we're like, you know what? Let's do something different and form a punk band with a little touch of oi. Uh -huh. And thus, The Wasted was born. We recorded uh, on guitar uh, Jesse, who plays now guitar in a band called Cry Havoc uh -huh. from Connecticut. Uh -huh. Yeah, so shout out to Jesse. And Jesse used to work as, I believe, as a camp counselor. And that's how we were able to find Adam Fatchler because he was one of the kids uh, in that camp okay, okay, that Jesse was uh, working as a camp counselor. So when Frankie left, we recruited uh, Adam. Uh -huh. So we got to play, uh, 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 there was a show, I don't know if it was Valentine Avenue, Candy. Candy, uh, shout out to Candy. Yeah. She would throw the, like, these house parties, house parties. Yeah, 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 in her sure. apartment. And we got to play in uh, one of those shows in the apartment. We were the band that were playing when the cops came. Ah. We were the band that were playing when the cops came. Ah, okay. Because okay. I remember Rui looks at me, and in our set list, we had a cover song. And that cover song, we were playing from, uh, it was a song called ACAB, which stands for All Cops Are Bastards, uh -huh. from a band called The Foreskins. Uh -huh. So when the cops came, and they're trying to handle the situation, yeah, yeah, don't worry, we're going to be quiet, blah, blah, blah. That song kicks in with an intro with a bass intro. So he I started doom 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 Then we started playing A C A B as the cops were there. Oh man, it was crazy. I look back and I'm like, yo, that's some crazy shit. You know? So bands to be playing in, in this girl's apartment. It was crazy shit, man. It, it was fun, man. It was fun. So that was one of the shows that we did in in um in the Bronx. Uh, where else did uh we did uh we did a couple of shows in Yonkers. Uh huh. We played a church in Yonkers that my boy Jim, shout out to James Caverly, aka Jim. Uh, he would book shows. Jim also had a venue on McLean Avenue called the Smoky Tooth. Oh, the Smoky Tooth. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah, sure. the Smoky Tooth. Uh, he would book shows, and I met Jim. I believe on the bus. I would see him on the 20 bus. Because uh -huh. at the time, I used to work in Yonkers at a department store called Bradley's. Okay. Yeah. And Bradley's was like a... Remember the movie Coming to America? Yeah. yeah. Remember how you had McDonald's and McDowell's? Uh-huh. That was Bradley's to Caldor. Because you had Caldor and you had Bradley's. <laughs> and I worked in Bradley's. Yeah. And every time I would go to work, I would see like these hardcore kids that would get on the bus... And Jim was one of them, and eventually I got to meet him, and he would book us for shows in Westchester in Yonkers, New York. Uh -huh. And we got to play a church show, and it was with Awkward Thought, which remember, Awkward Thought featured John Franco, who worked at Rockin' Records. Uh -huh. John Franco also um, plays bass for No Redeeming Social Value. Yeah. Uh, everybody Gets Hurt with Rob, uh -huh. Rob who I was in a band with um, in Alpha Blood. And uh, us, and uh, it was another band at that church show. I remember because the priest came out and he was there checking us out. But he was cool about it. He was cool there. The priest was there chilling and shit like that. We also got to play at a place called the Sanitarium, which is on Chestnut or Walnut, something nut, uh. Street in Yonkers. And that was with... Bought a, a, an oi band called Bottom of the Barrel. Uh -huh. They didn't get to play, but they were on the bill. Okay. Bottom of the Barrel, I believe Rights Reserved, uh -huh. Us, and uh, in another band, I forgot. And we played that show, in, uh, that was in Yonkers, and that was with The Wasted. I remember that night because Adam, the drummer, 
his mom came to pick us up. And at that show, uh, Bacardi came out with a drink called Bacardi Limon. Uh, 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 and I had a bunch of the little bottles. So during our set, I, I kept taking some swigs. <laughs> so by the time our show was done, I was, I was wasted. <laughs> and, uh, so, and I was in the back seat. It was me, Jesse, and Rui. And I turned over to Rui. And I'm like, yo, Rui, man, I think I'm a hurl. It was kind of like the Wayne's World scene. Remember the Wayne's World scene when Homeboy's about to hurl or whatever? And he's like, oh, no, dude, not now, man. We're in the highway, man. Just try to hold it till we get home. I'm like, dude, I can't. Dude, I can't. So Adam's mom was cool enough to pull over the side uh, to, uh, the highway. I'm there hurling chunks. And she was cool about it. Don't worry. As soon as you get, just let it all out. Let it all out. As soon as you let it all out, you're going to feel a lot better. Go ahead. And I'm there hurling. <laughs> Thanks to Bacardi Limon. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys a quick album that we came out with. Yeah. Uh, with The Wasted. We came out with this one. Nobody Likes Us. Uh -huh. So it's on Rui on vocals. Jesse on guitar. By that time, by this time, Frankie had already left The Wasted. Yeah. He had uh, Go to Mantis. He had the whole Driven by Hatred thing. And uh, Adam Fatchler got to record on this. Uh -huh. uh, by the, when the album came out, I was out of the band by, by then. Okay, I see. But I see. Uh, we recorded this at um, Music Unlimited Studios. Uh -huh. And we recorded 12 tracks on this. So there's 12 tracks on this, um, on this CD, Nobody Likes Us. This girl on the cover, rest in peace, she ended up passing away from an accidental uh, drug overdose and whatnot. Uh, during this time, we were all, we was also featured in uh, Bronx Bronx Times newspaper. Uh -huh. Yeah, shout out to I believe his name was Fish Alturi, Fish something. Uh, one of the guys that you uh, interviewed, I believe he was in a band called Critical. Oh, Critical Mass. Critical Mass. Yeah. He mentioned that guy. He did. He did. He Fish did, yeah. something. Yeah. And he was the one who put. The article out on us on Bronx Times oh, when we came out. Do in you remember it. what year it is? We actually have all the Bronx. Times really, I have right the there. news. I might have the news. Yes, oh, look I do. At that. You have the I have the newspaper right clipping. Amazing. Here it is. Look at that. That's the newspaper. Punkster clipping. youngsters, revenants forged from the wasted's remains. Right. Look at that. And that's the actual newspaper hmm. clipping. I believe from 1996, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Fish Alteria, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, my apologies. But uh, yeah, this is it. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's it. That's we incredible. came out in Bronx Times. That's incredible. Yes, sir. Um, did you all ever, I'm, I'm sure you attended, but did you all ever play at like the train depot? Yeah, as a matter of fact, the Wasted okay, played at, the, at, the, wasted. Train, at okay. the train depot. We played with... Uh, Shout out to Blackout. We, ah, we played Blackout. with the Blackout. Okay, sure. Also, we were supposed to play at Mulali BMX Park uh, with Sick of It All. With Sick of It All. We were on the wow, bill, wow. but we didn't get to play. That's too bad. Yeah, it was, I have it in my notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I'll get to it right now. It was uh, Sick of It All, Fahrenheit 451, uh -huh. The Six and Violence, a hip hop group called The Roguish Armament. And us, the wasted. Ah, I see. Yeah, but we didn't get to play uh, that show. Um, yeah, some, they had to move this, the order around a lot. Of yeah, it, right? something with sound or whatever. But we were supposed to play that show with Sick of It All. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And did you go to the other Malali uh, shows? Yeah, um, I got to see Vision of Disorder there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. got to see, um, who else? They, they had like these wrestling uh, events there. Yeah. Uh, of course, Sick of It All. That video footage that you see on YouTube of Sick of It All, that was actually taken with my video camera. Uh -huh. And the one who shot that was a good friend of mine by the name of Sid. Shout out to Sid. Sid plays in a band called uh, United Blood. Oh, he plays bass. Sure, sure, sure. Sid also in the 90s had a public access show. But it was only seen, I believe, in Manhattan. They wouldn't I play see. it in the Bronx. I see. I find I found out about that show. I had a buddy of mine, this metalhead kid that lived in Manhattan by the name, uh, what was his name? Mike Alayon. 
if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, my bad, Mike. And he would record the uh, he would record uh, record these shows that Sid would put out on his show Psycho T uh, Psycho TV. And Sid would put a lot of uh, shows that he would record, and it would be a lot of hardcore punk and oi stuff. So Mike would call me up and be like, "Hey, listen, um, there's this show called Psycho TV. Uh, do they give it on public access in the Bronx?" I'm like, nah, I never heard of it. You know what? I'm going I'm to uh, record it, and I'll lend you a couple of videotapes so you can see some of this stuff that, uh, that he's recording. It, it, you know, it'll catch your interest. And I was like, all right, bet, cool. And, and sure enough, it would be a bunch of bands that Sid would uh, record and put it on his show. Wow. And he had a P.O. box. So I reached out to him, and he hollered back at me, and we became buddies. Huh. Me and Sid became buddies. And we would go to shows together, and Sid was into punk. Yeah. And I was in, and I was a, a skinhead at that time. And I remember me and Sid would go to shows together, hopping on the one train, because Sid lived on the, in Washington Heights. Ah, I see, I see. And I see. people would look at us and shit. Sid with his mohawk, <laughs> with his uh, with his bondage pants, with the bump flap, punk shirt, and and, and I'm with my, my docks, with my bleach bleach jeans. By my bra- boots and braces and whatever, shaved head, and we were going to shows together and whatnot. And he would video coach, uh, re- uh, video record some shows, and I would video uh, video record some shows. Whenever he wanted to dance, yeah. I would record. Whenever I wanted to dance, he would go and record uh, these shows. I see, I see. Yeah. So shout out to Sid. So you yeah. you were out in the pit in the sick of it all show. I'd oh say. oh hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah! And he ended up reco- shooting it. Using my camera. Ah, I see. I yeah, see. That's the good old show. And did you did you go to the uh, shows when District Nine were playing at, at Malali? <coughs> I, th- well, I, absolutely. I think they played with VOD. I, I forget who else was on the VOD. Because show. I would go shows when they were close call. Yeah, of course. Yeah, now yeah, let's yeah. get this right. They weren't the only close call. There used to be another close call from Brooklyn uh-huh. that features members from. Uh, from Confusion, shout out to Mike Scandado. Mike Scandado, um, him and his brothers play basically in hardcore bands. His brother plays in Shutdown. Uh, uh, Mike played in, uh, he played bass in Confusion. He's the vocalist for a band called The Last Stand. Uh-huh. And he's also the vocalist uh, for this band called Inhuman. Uh-huh. Inhuman also had a Bronx guy, shout out to Walter. Who also played in a band called Everything's Ruined. Okay, I see. Because I remember seeing Everything's Ruined when they would do shows at Music Unlimited. Ah. Yeah, and Walter played in the same ba- um, band with Mike. So there was a close call before Close Call from the Bronx, which featured Mike Scandato. I yeah. see, I see. But we didn't know of that band. Yeah, sure. Because I'm pretty sure if Puerto Rican Mike knew, they would have probably had never uh, had that name, had that name or whatever. Yeah. But uh, close call. When was the first time I seen them? I think it was the Metal Madness show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Now, when Joel, who played drums for Close Call, who I also went to high school with, when he left Close Call, George Vasquez, who I went to junior high school, high school with. Joint forces with Close Call. They played this club called um, Bond Street, the Bond oh, Street sure, Cafe, sure. that was only a couple of blocks. So it was in the village yeah. on Bond Street, yeah. which was a couple of blocks away from the, the Tower Records that I would go to in the village uh-huh. downtown. So if I wouldn't go to the Tower Records in Yonkers, I would go to the Tower Records downtown in the village, which I believe Gary Motley used to work there, that's right, that's if right. I'm not mistaken. That's right. So, uh, where was I? Uh, seeing Close Call, right? Yeah. Uh, Puerto Rican Mike, I met him at that Metal Madness uh, uh, 2 show. Uh, uh, what you gonna call it? Who was um? Which later on became District 9. Loki joined, for, uh, Loki joined forces with them. I was, I was able to get a lot of footage of them. I got footage of them in Bond Street. I got footage of them in Mulali. Uh-huh. I got to see them at Mulali. Um, as a matter of fact, speaking of District uh, of Close Call, which later on became District 9, I got this bad boy right here. Look at that. 
the school a la hard knock seven inch. Uh-huh. Look at that. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, yeah. you can you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's in the back, that's them. That's them. Which features uh Ray on drums, Loki on bass, Puerto Rican Mike on vocals, C's on guitar, uh-huh. and Todd the Kid on guitar. Todd played with a bunch of bands. Todd played with Warzone. He played with Vision. And he plays with a band now called Overstand. Uh-huh. I believe he's out in Arizona. I now. see. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Look at that. This bad boy right here. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. And I've had it since since then. Wow. Yeah, and I believe it's a clear Look at that. vinyl on Striving for Togetherness Records. Uh-huh. I believe this is Puerto Rican Mike's little brother. Look at that. If I'm not mistaken. Wow. Yeah. Shout out to Kevin Gill on uh, Striving for it Together in this records. And during this time, District 9 also got to play uh, Crucial Chaos uh-huh. on That's 89.1. Right. That's right. Yeah. I think Radio Glenn Station. was working there at the time, I think. Yeah. Not to be mistaken with 89.5 WSOU, which is that radio station is still around out of, uh, I believe, South Orange, New Jersey, uh-huh. which is another radio station that I used to listen to, uh, WSOU. Uh, a lot of metal. Sure. And stuff like that, yeah. Um, and what about, uh, I mean, since we're, since it's right down the road, what about the Wasted um, uh, playing at uh, the Blackthorn? I know yeah, we, we got to play there. We got to play there with uh, Go to Benson's as well. That's right. Um, this one, um, not too far from here, as a matter That's of right, fact. That's right, like a few blocks yeah, down yeah, the road. Not, yeah, yeah, uh, not too, uh, too far from here. Great time. Uh, was it Frankie on drums during that time? I think it was Frankie on drums during that time. Yeah. I don't think it was Adam. Because when we did the shows in Yonkers, that was with that Adam. Was Adam yeah. And I believe Adam went to high school with another Bronx guy named Brian Darwis. Uh-huh. Brian Darwis was the guy who directed the video for Agnostic Front's Old New York. Uh-huh. Which was filmed in the Bronx. On the 6th train. On right? the 6th train. Yeah. I was there. I came out in the music video. If you looked at if you look at the music video, you're gonna see a guy with a band with a skull bandana. That's that was you, me. Huh? Wow. Yeah, Brian Doris uh, directed that. Wow. He also directed a horror movie called Get My Gun, which is out on Tubi. Ah. Huh. Yeah, Bronx guy, and I believe he went to high school with Adam Fatchler. I if see. I'm not and mistaken. Lehman, I guess. Maybe yeah, that's... Lehman High School. If I'm not mistaken, I could yeah. be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we played the uh, the Black Thorn in the Bronx. Wow. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you want to talk? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you, you know, to maybe we'll spend some time going through some of what you brought in a second. But you want to talk about, um, you know, the any other shows with the wasted, and then also, you know, what led you to leave the wasted and the final part of the wasted? Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Any, any, let me see. I'm trying to think, man. Any other shows with the Wasted? Okay, we played the sanitarium. We played the church show. We didn't get to play uh, the Smoky Tooth in Yonkers. I see, I see. No, no, we didn't get to play. But there, I got in at, uh, at the Smoky Tooth, I got to see Burn Down. Oh! Which features okay. members from Proof of Purchase, uh-huh. which we'll get, uh, we'll get into later. Because I believe I have their cassette with me. Wow, wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, for blood... Uh, what, other, what, what other show? Let me see. Um, well, I ended up leaving the wait when I ended up leaving the wasted. Rui and Jesse, I believe, formed a band called Coffin Thirteen. Oh, Coffin Thirteen, sure, which sure. featured uh, Anthony. Uh, we used to, they he used to be called we used to call him Misfit because he was a big Misfits guy. I see. Always oh, Misfits teach. He was a big Misfits guy, and. Was it Coffin, uh, Coffin 13? Yeah. Yeah, it was Coffin I think 13. Frankie was in that. And Seriously. Frankie was in that. Uh, then after Coffin 13, I believe they formed Grave Radio. Oh. Okay. Something like that, man. I had notes on that, and I think I left it home. I, I think I left that part home. I see. If I see, I'm not mistaken. Uh, my apologies, no. Roy. And um, whatchamacallit, at that time I was getting a lot into. Uh, Hip hop music. Sure, sure. Um, 
I even stopped going to like a hardcore and metal shows at one point. I see. I remember my older sister saying, hey, listen, man, why don't you start coming out with me and um, come to some of these uh, clubs that I go to? I was like, you know what? All right, cool. This was like in the like ni- late 90s. Late 90s, I see, yeah. So I would go to these clubs with my sister, Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, uh-huh. Jet Set Cafe, um, and these club will give nothing but salsa, merengue, uh-huh. bachata, Latin house music, and uh-huh. reggaeton. I see, I see. So it was so. a whole different vibe, a whole different scene. And more girls. Yes, absolutely. You know, so I was like, oh, man, what the hell? So I started going to a lot of Spanish clubs. Yeah. Started cleaning my look up a bit. I would go to uh, Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, Uh Latin Quarters, uh, Club Exit, uh, Jet Set, which I believe was on either 3rd Avenue or Webster. Yeah. I would go to Extremes. That was on Webster Avenue, right across the police precinct. Sure. I used to go to high school with this kid um, named Hector. Shout out to Hector. And his brother, uh, DJ Cello, used to DJ at Extremes. Uh He also DJed at Skate Key. The second Skate Key in the the South Bronx. Not the first Skate Key, the uh, the second Skate Key. I see. And I would go to these clubs and get my little dance on. Desi merengue, salsa, bachata, you know. My, my sister would uh, teach me how to dance or whatever, meet chicks and stuff like that. But then I started having the itch yeah. to go back to the hardcore metal shows back in the late uh, 90s, early 2000s. I see. And whatever. I see. During that era, when I would go to uh, Spanish clubs, I was lucky enough to see uh, Tito Rojas. Wow. Okay, okay, Rest okay. in peace. I got to see him in um, Bronx, um, at Jimmy's Bronx Cafe. Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, wow. Yeah. I didn't live too far from there because at that time I was living on University Avenue. Okay. And you know, uh, Jimmy's Bronx Cafe was right by the Deegan. Yeah. yeah. Right before you jump into uh, Manhattan. That's right. By the bridge and whatever. But that was, uh, that was a lot of fun, man. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I miss that. Wow. Um, so yeah, let's let's see some of what you brought b- before sure. we continue on with no the, problem. the rest of your so, story. We're going to go into uh, Rampage. Yes. Shout out to Joe Rampage. Shout out to Tony. Rest in peace, Mike. And this is one of the first stickers that wow, Rampage had. That. This is the same sticker from that era, from that time. That's amazing. Yeah. Rampage was supposed to play with uh, Tito Nieves, I believe, on Washington Avenue. Huh. Right by, uh, not too far from Little Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what happened if the guitar player didn't show up or, or the drummer or something. But Rampage was supposed to play with Tito Nieves. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. Joe Rampage used to work at Bronin's. Uh-huh. And Bronin's was like one of our hangout when I, uh, after high school. Yeah. After high school, me and the metalheads would go to Bronin's and that was like our hangout. Sure. Uh, Bronin's is where I bought my first bass. I see, I see. And see. Rocky, who do that uh, uh, that show at um, the Blue Frog, yeah. used to work there too. And Frank from Fahrenheit 451. Yeah. Loki used to work there as well. I believe Joel used to work there as well too. Wow. One thing that I forgot to mention about Joel, Joel used to also play with that bachata group Extreme. And he also played with Dan Omal, wow. believe it or okay. not. So, so shout wow. out to Joel. So he's playing in bachata groups and... And uh, regga- doing the regga- wow. uh, reggaeton stuff. He's a big wow. vinyl collector now and a DJ as well. Wow. And I went to high school with him, and he, which he later on formed Fed, uh, Fatal Blessing. Uh-huh. Fatal Blessing played a show that the Go to Mentis guy spoke about on Bailey Avenue, right off of Fordham. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the show where people church. pulled out a, a fire extinguisher. Everybody started moshing and then <laughs> started coughing. And then I remember that show because everybody started walking down a Fordham Road and it was a parade of metalheads. Yep. And shit. With a boombox. Uh. Right, right, right. <laughs> Fatal Blessing played that show. Okay. Rui from the, uh, the, from the Wasted 
was supposed to sing for Fatal Blessing that day. I see. But there wasn't no microphone. <laughs> I DJed at that show playing uh -huh. vinyls, metal vinyls. Wow. And, and whatnot. So that's the sticker from Rampage. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Also, I have a picture of the train depot. Oh my God, look at this. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but that's the front and uh, the awning, I think is what you call it. Yeah, 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 the awning, yeah. Of the train depot. Wow. Can you catch that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So that was the train depot. Uh, this is the wasted sticker that Rui draw, and oh, that's the sticker that. that we got. Look at that. We that. put out at that time. Wow. Yeah, that's the sticker. Rui drew that, the vocalist. Also, I have here the sticker of Dead Season. Uh -huh. Dead Season was Gio's band and Danny Cabrera uh -huh. was in this band as well. I'm that's not incredible. sure if Louis, that plays in Go to Mentis, was in this Maybe band. Was in that band. Maybe. But this is the uh, sticker. I believe G Gio uh, uh, did this sticker. Did that. I see. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But shout out to Gio. Shout out to Danny. Shout out to Dead Season. Wow. That's the sticker. Another sticker I have is Billy Club Sandwich. Uh -huh. Here it is, BCS. And that's one of the that's first stickers. That. Crazy, that's in orange. I know. Kind of cool. I know it is. You know? That's Billy Club Sandwich. Speaking of Billy Club Sandwich, I also have here this uh -huh. bad boy. Look at that. Yes, sir. All the baloney. <laughs> yes, sir. I believe this is uh, uh, this guy's dad, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, um, uh, uh, Malone? Is it Malone? No, no, no. no uh, God, I forgot his name, man. Shit. I forgot his name, man. Shit, but anyway, this is a badass seven inch. Absolutely. Another seven inch I got is the truants the truants okay now the reason why i bought this bad boy out is because shout out to this guy right here mel truant oh, mel. who's okay, another okay. bronx guy wow and he played with the punk band the truants oh i see now oh. now that we're uh on on the punk side yeah i still hop on the 12 bus which, you know, the 12 bus runs all throughout Fordham uh -huh. Road into Pelham Parkway. That's right. And when I would be on the BX-12 running throughout Fordham, I would see these two Bronx, um, in the Bronx, I would see these two punk guys. One big, tall, heavy set dude, and one slim dude, tall, Mohawk. Yeah. Walking down Fordham, and I'm talking about punked out with a little boombox, blasting punk. I'm like, yo, who the fuck are these... Two punks, you know, these two punk dudes. Which later on, I ended up meeting these guys. Both of them passed away. One of them, his name is called Bones. And the other one is Tommy. Tommy Bodrero, I believe is his last name. Tommy. And those were the two punk guys. Those two punk guys, Bones, was a bass player for this punk band called Terminal Buzz from the Bronx. Uh -huh. Yes. Um... One of the first Bronx punk bands that I that I heard of playing um, punk music, which kind of inspire, um, inspired me to start a punk band with Rui, with The Wasted. Also at that time, shout out to Mario, there was another Bronx Manhattan-based band called The Walking Abortions. The Walking Abortions. Yes, okay. with Mario in the band. These Bronx, guy, these Bronx punks guys used to work at a Petland, uh, Petland store that was located on East 188th, right off the concourse by yeah. this Gucci Frito store. Oh, this oh, known okay. Gucci Frito sure, store sure, there. Sure, there sure. was a pet land on the corner of uh, 188th, right off the concourse. And all of them used to work there. Tommy used to work there. Oh, Mario used to work there, I believe. Um, uh, who else? Also, I befriended one of the vocalists in that band, Shout out to Charlie. And Charlie was a skinhead at that time. He used to live on, on Crescent Avenue. Yeah. And because Terminal Bus had two vocalists. They, uh, they had a chick vocalist and they had Charlie vocalist. And the chick, her name was uh, Karis. Shout out to Karis. 
She's she's out in California now. Oh, okay, okay. And Karis was Bones' girlfriend. I see. Bones was the bass player. Yeah. Of Terminal Buzz. And during that time, the Truants, uh, they were first called the Furies, I believe. And from the Furies, turned out to be the Truants. I see. Yeah. And this band, I would go out to a, a venue called ABC No Rio. Yeah. That used to be in the basement of an abandoned building. Uh-huh. And I remember they would do sh- uh, punk and uh, hardcore, uh, hardcore shows there. And if you didn't have money, you could donate canned goods I to see. go in. Uh, and they would have uh, shows there. And Terminal Buzz would, would play there. The Furies would play there. I would... Uh, Shout out to Freddie Alva. Freddie Alva used to do shows there as well. Um, which later on, Freddie Alva pulled uh, uh, their uh, shout out to War Dance Records because uh, Freddie Alva also runs War Dance Records. Uh-huh. And um, where I'm at. So, yeah, so that's where the uh, shout out to Mel. Shout out to the Truants. The Furies turned out to be the Truants. Shout out to Terminal Buzz. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Bones. His real name is. Uh, John, I believe John Francisco was his real name. I see. Yeah. Was it John Francisco? I believe that was his real name. But anyway, Bones. Yeah, shout out to Bones. Shout out to Tommy. Tommy was also a DJ. I believe he moved out to Denver when he left the, the Bronx. But Tommy would put me into a lot of um, the oi and punk stuff that I didn't know and I would get from him. He also put me onto this cool store out in... Uh, Passaic, New Jersey, called Two Tone, huh. and Two Tone would sell a lot of like punk, ska, oi stuff, and uh, we would go out to Passaic, New Jersey, huh. and I found out of that Two uh, Two Tone store through Tommy. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, jumping on uh, on more of the punk stuff. Here, I got a sticker that was given to me by uh, Rabies ah, of Warzone when yes. I would take trips to out to the wetlands. Because Rabies used to work at the wetlands. Sometimes he would get me in for free through the back. I see. And when I real cool down the earth, dude. So this sticker was given to me during the, mid-a- uh, the mid-90s. I see. I see. Yeah. So R-A-B. this sticker I'll still have from that time wow. given to me by Rabies um, from Warzone. Wow. Yeah. Also, I have here, here's another Rampage sticker yeah, Rampage. that I didn't get to show. Uh, what else I have here? Here's another Billy Club Sandwich uh, of CD. Chim- this one, that Chin Music. That's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Uh, here's Seizure Crypt. Oh, wow. Now, Seizure Crypt features Danny Cabrera, Uh who I went to high school with, who was in Dead Season, who I also played in uh, the high school band in. He played in Seizure Crypt. Also, Seizure Crypt had two vocalists. One of the vocalists, Mike S.O.S., played in a band called, I believe, S.O.S. Band, if I'm not mistaken, with Mike Bonilla from Rampage. I see. And he's a vocalist in this band, Seizure Crypt. Incredible. Yeah, so wow. shout out to Danny. When, what, 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 did, what did Seizure Crypt sound like? Um, um, it, was, uh, it was a mix of like thrash metal, uh, a little bit of hardcore elements. It was a mix of everything all in one. I see. Yeah, good stuff right here. Wow. So wow. shout out to uh, Seizure Crypt. Uh, also, I have, I, I have here the Warcraft ah, demo. The Warcraft demo. From his that. mind. Wow. Gerson, who I went to high school with, who I also played in the high school band, was in this band, Warcraft. Okay? Warcraft played the Metal Madness one at Chippewa. Uh-huh. This band right here. Gerson was Tony from Rampage's student. Okay? Wow. And I went to high school with Gerson. I believe Gerson Ortiz was his last name. Yeah, Gerson Ortiz. And Gerson Ortiz lived on um, on 187, not too far from Hector, 
that I was in a, a band with for a short period of time with, uh, with uh, Lou Perez, who also helps out with, uh, at the time, Mulali BMX Park. I see. Yes. I see. So Hector lived on the same block with Gerson from Warcraft. Wow, wow. Who I went to Roosevelt High School with. Wow. Yes. All right. Also, I have here is Burn Down. Burn Down. Look at that. All right. Shout out to Jose. Shout out of uh, uh, AKA Pando Blau, <laughs> uh, Lewis. Um, Burn Down, I got to see them at the Smoky Tooth venue. Uh -huh. That was on McLean uh, uh, Avenue in Yonkers. So that's the demo right here. Burn Down. You really can't see it. It's a guy that looks burned. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you, can, you guys can see that. A little bit, yeah. yeah here's the cassette. Wow. Yeah. So I first, when I first heard of these guys was through uh, the Smoky Tooth venue in Yonkers, which wow. also Starve got to play there. Uh-huh. And uh, they got to play there as well with, uh, with uh, Burn Down. Wow. Yeah, that's that. With cassettes, I also have Without a Cause. Look at that. It's funny because I bought this Without a Cause I believe I want to say I rock and Rex. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, rock and Rex featured Frank from Fahrenheit 451, Lenny B from Fahrenheit 451. You know Lenny B uh, played uh -huh. in numerous of bands, District Nine, That's right. uh, uh, Dominican Day Parade, Dominican Parade, and a bunch of uh, Crazy, Crazy Eddie, Eddie. And, a, and a bunch of other bands that he played in. Uh, without a cause, they also played at Rock and Rex. Uh, records in Yonkers. Uh, they also played Metal Ma uh, Metal Madness one at the Chippewa uh -huh. Club. And all that footage is on YouTube it that is, I that I shot. Right. Yeah. Um, that's right. What else I have here? Uh, Fahrenheit four five one, which is without a cause that later on turned into Fahrenheit four five one. Uh huh. All right, and this is a two song. That had a uh, settle and shift. Shift, yeah. Yeah. This one, uh, Joe Scallo played drums on. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Who, uh, during this time, they played Mulali BMX Park uh -huh. as well during this during this time. Uh, what else I got? Um, I also have a compilation that came out during the, that time. But before I get into that compilation... Here's the Fahrenheit 451, ah, the yes, thought of the it. Thought of it. Right? Wow. That's how Striving for Togetherness record. Shout out to Kevin Gill. Uh -huh. Kevin Gill also put out that uh, New York Hardcore documentary. Yes. All right? Not to be mistaken with the documentary that Drew Stone put out. Sure, sure. Okay? So this is the CD on Striving for Togetherness, uh, togetherness records. Uh, uh, Kevin... Kevin Smith, who's also uh, my bandmate named Crazy Eddie, he was playing bass on this. And uh, oh, oh, what's his name? The drummer, Ray. Ray. Yeah. yeah Ray. I remember this was, we used to do these get togethers on Hoffman, because Frank used to live on Hoffman. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right off of Fordham Spot. Road. And they had this painted in their living that's room. Right, that's right. The cover right, that's of this. Right. I believe, I don't, I'm not sure. If Tattoo Tony did it. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tattoo That's right. Tony. That's right. Yeah, because Ted, shout out to Tattoo Tony. Tattoo Tony would do tattoo to every, almost every metalhead and hardcore kid in the Bronx. Yeah, so wow. this is the CD. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, so this is another banger. And also, I have here. Bam! Damn, look at that. <laughs> the District 9 School of Hard Knocks. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. The wow. exit, uh, Kevin Gill was the exit of, uh, uh, producer on this. Yeah. Wow. Also, the CD has uh, them playing at CBGB's in 2006. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's yes. right. Yes. This is a bad boy right here. Yes, it is. Here's the CD, which features, I think, Puerto Rican Mike's younger brother. And what's cool is that, remember the old school tests? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, look at that. New York hardcore list. Yeah. And then you had the composition notebook. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know? 
<laughs> which is cool. That's really cool. Yeah. So that, so that's cool. That's another. And this is the compilation that I was going to get into. Yeah. Which is New York's Hardest. Absolutely. And the reason why I pulled this out is because it got uh, two Bronx ba uh, uh, bass bands, which is uh, Fahrenheit 451's on here. Uh-huh. And is D9, oh no, no, District 9 is not on here. But Fahrenheit is definitely on this bad boy. I think, from what I remember, I don't remember who shared this, but District 9 was supposed to be on it, but for one reason they couldn't. For one reason or another they couldn't, so then Fahrenheit 451 was approached. Oh, okay, got like it, that. got it, uh, got it, got it. This features uh, VOD, Vision of Disorder. VOD played Mulali, uh, Mulali BMX Park. Bulldoze who's one of the originators of Beat Down Hardcore, uh -huh. uh, 25 to Life, shout out to Rick to Life, uh, Rest in Peace, Kevin Bulldoze, uh, Scarhead, shout out to Danny Diablo, is on here, UXB, which features Roger from Agnostic Front, and Full Contact, uh -huh. which features uh, Jorge from Marauder, is on this bad boy as well. Yeah. yeah. So this is a real killer, yes, killer uh, uh, compilation. I, I believe it's online. You could definitely check it out if you guys haven't. Uh, also on CD, I have Four in the Chamber. Look at that, yeah. Rep Bronx Represent. Uh-huh. Right? That bad boy. And, of course, go to, the Go to Mentis. Go to Mentis. Yeah. I couldn't find their first one, but I pulled out this... This one, that Death Farm, the shout out to Death Farm, right? One, yeah, yeah, that they put out. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Go to Mexico, shout out to Frankie and them. Rest in peace, Milton. Now that we're on CDs, here's Fahrenheit. Uh huh. Discography. That's right. Everything's on this bad boy, including the documentary DVD. That's right. All right. Shout out to the Fahrenheit guys, and for those who haven't checked out. They, uh, you got, you know, you did the interview with Mando, Kevin, Frank, and Lenny. That's right. Which is a very, very good interview with them guys. So this is it, the complete discography. It's funny because right here you see Ryan Bland, who plays in Ake, oh. and Ake features a, uh, one of my ex bandmates, Matt, who's in Ake, and Matt played guitar. In a band with me called Abject that wow. we're gonna get into. Wow. Okay. So yes, I got that. And uh, any more CDs? Another compilation that came out that everybody had was the Striving for Togetherness. It's all good compilation. Uh -huh. Now in this compilation, District Nine is on here. Yeah. Uh, so it's um. Let me see. It's a uh, VOD, the Roguish Armament. The Six in Violence, District 9, uh, Without a Cause is on here. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, and a bunch of like straight edge hardcore bands. Sure. Like Up Front, Wide Awake, Pressure Release, uh, Head First, and Intent to Endure. Sure. Uh, it's, uh, the, the, the Six in Violence. There's uh, one track from District 9 on here called Fool. And then there is one, two, three, four tracks on here from Without a Cause. Ah, two see. Bronx bass bands. Yeah. Wow. So, the striving, uh, Strivingness for Togetherness that Kevin Gill put out. Okay, this is cool. I believe C's got this tattooed on his leg. Uh -huh. There goes the chick. That's on the CD. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And then the CD has the booklet and whatnot. Uh, there you go to the little striving for togetherness mascot, uh -huh. whatever. And here come here has the covers there, yeah. of all the albums that were featured on this comp. And I believe they have a little rest in peace dedicated to Chuck here. Oh wow! Yeah, that's cool. Also, I have here. With someone that you did an interview with. Let's see. Absolution. Oh, Absolution. Wow. Yes. wow. Absolution. Look at that. On War Dance Records that Freddie Alba put out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. All right. So, Shout out to Jinji. Shout out to Jinji, yeah. And, and Gavin Van Vlack. Yeah. Who's on this bad boy. All uh-huh. right. This was recorded at, uh, I believe, 6-3 six, uh, six, Studios in Queens. Yeah. Uh, uh, and shout out to Andy uh, Gaida. Gaida, Gaida. My, my bad, Andy. He, pro- uh, he produced this. Andy also produced uh, the Crazy Eddie stuff as well. Ah, I see, yeah. I see, I see. And this is out on War Dance Records. Shout out to Freddie Alva. Yeah. Okay. And you know, uh, Gingy, who's a Bronx guy himself. That's right. Who's, I believe, now in, out in Florida. That's right. That's yeah, right. yeah. So shout out to him. All right. That's, this is cool. That's really cool. Uh, I also have here a sticker that I forgot to show you guys from Without a Cause. Oh, without a Cause. Look this is that. a Without a Cause sticker. Wow. Uh-huh. From that time, from that era. Yeah. Yeah. So shout, shout out to the Without a Cause guys. Yeah. Um, also, I want to get into uh, Abject. But before yes. I get into Abject, I want to show off another CD here. Oh, sure, sure. Of their Bronx guys. Inziguri. Yes. Yeah. I wish I had the other one. But I got the Bronx Zoo. The Bronx Zoo. And this one. I, I, I do have the other one. The one but, that has Alfie's place on the cover. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. This came later. Yeah, that's right. That's but, you right. know, I got to show love to these guys. Shout out to Davey Hooligan. Absolutely. Who's on this. Shout out to uh, Lugo. Because Lugo plays for, um, he sings for Extingu- uh, Extinguish, Extinguish the Cold. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and he was uh, he was in his Izaguri during this time, so shout out to them. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna be getting into is um, uh, the band Abject. All right, and uh, what was our first CD? Do I have it here? I wish I do. I might not. Let me see. Uh, no, I don't think I I brand I brung it. But anyway. Wasted was a band that I uh, uh, I was approached by Jamie, the singer. Jamie, shout out to Jamie Hammer. I bumped into it. Uh, I bumped heads with him one day in Yonkers, and he approached me and he said, "Hey, listen, I want to put together a hardcore band. Are you playing?" I'm like, "No, no, I'm not playing right now." This was back in uh, I think 2011. Okay, okay. In 2011, so he recruited Matt, Matt, aka Madikins. Maticus is originally from Washington, D.C., oh, okay. but he was living in Brooklyn at the time. And uh, shout out to Chris. Chris was from Brooklyn. He was the drummer. And uh, we got together. We formed Abject uh, out of Brooklyn, Bronx, Yonkers. Uh-huh. And with Abject, uh, that lasted until like 2014. Okay. okay. Yeah, 2014. We came out with an album called uh, Try Again, that's out, and um, I did a bunch of shows with Abject. We went on a bunch of little mini tours, Uh, we opened up for Wisdom and Chains, we we opened up for Stigma, we opened up for uh, Antidote, we opened up for Agnostic Front, Slapshot, uh... No Redeeming Social Value, a bunch of bands. Wow. Uh, we got to play out in Washington, D.C. We got to play Virginia. We got to play actually here in the Bronx, too, with Abject. At, uh, oh, the Bronx Underground? Is that where? Was it the Ramblin'? No. Oh, the Ramblin' House. In the Congress. Ramblin' or, House. I mean, it's, it's on McLean, I think. Yeah, right? so, uh, by, it's in the it, Bronx. It's by, close by, to Yonkers, right? Yeah, 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 close to Yonkers, not too far from Woodlawn. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. we got to play there in wow. the Bronx with 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 uh with Abject. Also, we came out with this EP. Let me take up the uh, for you guys. Called uh, Thirty Nine Hours in Bronx Central Booking. Wow. Okay, this EP is actually based on a true story. Uh-huh. Okay, we are on our way to uh, band practice. Yeah. And we had a spot in Mount Vernon. And on one particular day, we used to pick up Matt and Chris at the Woodlawn train station, four train. We, me and Jamie would put, pick them up there. And we were on our way to Mount Vernon to band practice. And I remember 
these four guys got pulled over by these undercover cops. Uh-huh. And one of them had a shirt that kind of looked like a bad brain shirt. And I'm like, yo, look at homeboy with a bad brain shirt. And it turned out he had like a Jamaica shirt. Uh, Not bad brain, it was like a Jamaica shirt. Yeah. And as we're driving by looking, those, co- those cops look at us. And I guess they see four white dudes and a, and a Spanish dude in the car. That as we're driving off, whoop, uh, pull over. We pull over. License and registration. They made us all get out the car. And these motherfuckers planted some shit on us. Yeah. And get us for possession. I think for like a little, for a bag of like crack or some oh shit. With residue of crack or coke or some shit. And one of them tried to say that we had a little bag of weed on the glove compartment. The only thing we had was like beer. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. me and Matt were the only ones that drank in that band. Yeah. And mind you, it was covered. They took oh, us shit. in. They took us in. We ended up doing two days in jail. Damn. This record is based on that on those two days. Wow. To the point when we recorded this, we even did the skits. Uh, what happened that particular day. Yeah, yeah. So we do two days in jail, hire a lawyer, and guess what? We sued the shit out of NYPD. Good. We And we won the case. Wow, that's great. And Jamie's like, yo, we should write about this. And uh, I came out this, uh, this 7-inch. Wow. And we have uh, six tracks on this. We have a song called Narco, 39 Hours in Bronx at your booking, Don't Shit in Jail, Public pretender and what are you gonna do? Wow! So the whole the whole thing is a true story. We, we put this we put this out on Haunted Hotel Records wow. slash uh, Jobbers Records. Wow. Yeah, shout out to um, what's his name? Oh man, he's gonna kill me. Oh man, I forgot his name. Who who runs Haunted Hotel Records? Haunted Hotel Records is more of a grindcore. Power Violence Death Metal label. I see, I see, and, I see. And he'll also put out some hardcore punk stuff. Sure. So, yeah, he and he put this out for us. Wow. So, shout out to uh, Haunted, Haunted Hotel Records. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And this bad boy also is a glow-in-the-dark oh, vinyl. That's, wow, that's badass. And I drew the four train on there. Look at that. With the, with the abject logo that I, that I drew. Wow. Yeah. And this is a glow, uh, glow in the dark bad boy. Wow. Yeah. So they send us to 161st, to the bullpens in 161st. Uh-huh. We did two days in that shithole. And uh, and we recorded this. Wow. So, for it, you know, it's all, all out on streaming services. So for those who want to hear it, check it out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. We sued them. We got some money. And the rest is history. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. This band, Madikins, that plays an ache, uh, uh, was in this band. Also, uh, shout out to Shuffles. Jason, he was the drummer in Abject. And when he left this band, he, he was in a band called Point Blank. And then a band called So Much Lost. Uh-huh. Who featured another Bronx chick that played bass. Shout out to Phoebe. Oh, yeah, see. yeah. And then after Abject broke up, Jamie formed a band called uh, Close to the Edge. I want to say, yeah, Close to the Edge. So this is the Abject EP. This was our last album that we put out on Dead City Records. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. called um, Ugly on the Inside. I see. Yeah, Ugly on the Inside. And this is on uh, Dead City Records, 12 tracks on this bad boy. So is that... Two full lengths, one EP. Is that what Abject put out there? Yeah. Two full yeah. lengths, one EP. Yes, wow. sir. Yeah. And this is the last one. I see. Spew, the guitar player, his brother came out with this, uh, did the drawing on this. I did the logo, ah, the logo that yeah. Abject logo. And Spew, the guitarist, his brother, drew this particular uh, uh, album. Uh, the producer of this album is... The guitarist singer of the craze. Wow, okay, okay. Okay, he produced this album. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
at Cray's studio out in, I believe, Jersey at the time. Yeah. So Abject went from 2011 to 2014, did a shitload of shows, um, had fun with that band. I got to give it to Jamie. Jamie's a good, uh, uh, he, he writes some great lyrics. Uh, Mannequins, he's a great songwriter. He wrote uh, a lot of the music in Abject, who's now is an ache. Um, great, great, great band. And uh, it's funny because I mean, I ain't touched my bass for a while yeah. before I joined Abject. So when I was approached from uh, Jamie, it was one of the first times that I was able to touch my bass in a very long time when I was playing with them. Because you didn't, I guess you didn't play in any bands between The Wasted and Abject, right? No, I was still pl jamming out, playing or whatever, jamming but not nothing yeah. like like the wasted and um and you know what eventually came down to uh, playing with Abject. I see, I see, I see. Wow. Yes, sir. Um, and what about uh, after Abject? Um, I know Crazy Eddie comes down the line, of course, but was Crazy Eddie the next? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, after Abject, um. Uh, we formed Crazy Eddie, I want to say 2017. Okay. Me and Lenny uh, were talking about, he was like, hey, listen, are you playing with anyone? And we wanted to do something, off, you know, plain authentic, authentic hardcore punk. Yeah. And roots of like Black Flag, uh -huh. um, 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 Circle Jerks, sure. and, you know, that good authentic hardcore punk sound. And um, I had another drummer in mind. But that didn't work out. And he was always cool with um, Jason. Yeah. And they don't live too far from each other. Jason also plays drums for a down low. Uh-huh. And then we ended up recruiting Kevin. Because, you know, Kevin plays with him in Fahrenheit 451. Sure. It's funny because when I first met Kevin, was at Bronin's. Uh, yeah, it was at I Bronin's. See. I see. And um, the, first day I, uh, the first time I met him was him and Caesar. There were two metalheads hanging out in Bronin's. And because uh, Kevin was cool with Loki, and Loki used to work in Bronin's. Yeah, that's right. So the, fr the first time I met Kevin and C's was in Bronin's. Wow. Speaking of Bronin's, Joe Rampage was the one who drew the logo of Bronin's. That's right. He told me that. Yeah, before. which yeah, is yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. a guy playing like an upright uh, stand, uh, standard uh, bass. Yeah, that's right. Joe Rampage drew that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. I think he also said he was part of, of Shango Productions. Yeah, yeah. He um, did also, sound. Yeah. Joe Rampage was the one who did sound at that at uh, Blue, Blue Frog, Frog show. Blue Frog. That's right. That's yes. Right. Joe Rampage. And he was also involved in the BX uh, Mulali the show. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to Joe Rampage. Um, going with the Crazy Eddie thing. So we formed... And uh, we came out with uh, with the with the with our first one produced uh, by Andy Gaida, who produced that Absolution uh, stuff, and um, we've been together ever since. Yeah, yeah. You know, we also Crazy Eddie also put out this shout out to Crazy uh, shout out to um, Freddie Alva, uh -huh. the Urban Styles tape compilation, uh -huh. and Freddie Alva put this out on War Dance Records. And who, who all's on, on that compilation? Uh, also on here is Terminal Confusion, Frontline, uh, Loud and Bustorious, Last Cause, Die 116. So this is a very fun, good uh, Urban Styles tape that on um, Word Dance Records. Uh -huh. Shout out to Freddie Alba. Yes. All right. And that's that. Uh, the, uh, we, we came out with an EP, Eddie Ruins Fun. That's online. We put that on streaming. We, right. we didn't put that on physical. The only thing that we put on physical with uh, Crazy Eddie. Did we put on anything? Was, oh, the 7-inch. The 7-inch. Which I, right. didn't, I didn't bring um, with me. Lenny, Lenny gave me a copy. Oh, he gave you a copy? It's of? just in the other building. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we put that on 7-inch uh, as well. Wow. Yeah. Um, and what are some of the, the memorable shows that, that you played with Crazy Eddie? I mean, I know you play on a regular basis with them. So What's a good show that I played with uh, Crazy Eddie? Um, I want to see the Bowery Electric shows. Oh, yeah, sure. That sure, Drew Stone. Sure. Shout out to Drew Stone. 
that Juice Stone puts out. Those Larry Electric shows, man, those are a lot of fun, yeah, they man. Are, yeah. A lot, a lot of fun. Because you got you got the the kids, the teenagers, the tweens, the thirty year old guys, the fifty year old guys. It's an, it's a big mix. Metalheads, skaters, hardcore heads. Um to me it's the Bowery Electric shows. Absolutely. It's funny because one of those Bowery Electric shows, uh I think was it was it Robert Plant one day happened with his girl with his or his wife happened to walk by one day and one of those Bowery Electric shows that we were playing. Robert Plant from fucking Led Zeppelin, believe it or not. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna say the Bowery Electric shows is one of the best shows that um uh that Crazy Addy has been um, playing. Absolutely. Yeah, shout out to Drew Stone. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's funny because those crazy, uh, those Bobby Electra shows, Sid from Psycho TV was the one that would uh, DJ most of the time uh, those shows. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Full Sid. circle. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he would, uh, at time it would be Spike Polite from Sewage sure. that would also DJ those shows at the Bowery Electric. But um, yeah, it would be Sid. From Psycho TV that I linked up with recording these shows, uh -huh. um, and he'll be DJing those uh, those shows. Yeah. Wow. So to me, it will be those Bowery Electric shows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We sense. also played um, the Niagara, which is the A7. Uh, we played. We played there. I also played there with Abject. Oh. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Shout out to Juice Stone. We got that show because of Juice Stone. He was playing with the High and the Mighty. I see. I and see. the High and the Mighty had a reunion show. And we played that show, uh, thanks to Drew Stone, at the A7. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because the High and the Mighty were having a, a reunion show. I see. Yeah. Which High and the Mighty also has a Bronx member. I believe it's the bass player, at, if I'm not mistaken. At one point, at least the original lineup, Drew said all of the members were from the Bronx. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but 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 anyway, they they were the only ones from the Bronx that they knew about at the time. Right, um, right. I'm sure there were others, but yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a few things, um, you know, to to rewind that I want to ask you about. But before we do that, just want to see if you want to say anything else about Crazy Eddie before we take it back to a few things. Um, other than that, uh, let me see. No, it's about, it's about it. Just, um, you know, I'm having fun with this band. Uh, we we played a bunch of shows, played Philly, played Brooklyn, Queens. Uh, you know, it, it, I just find it funny how Lenny, I remember meeting Lenny when I record uh, Ray Maloon, who was also the drummer in Without a Cause. Yeah. Uh, they did a show at uh, Wetlands. I want to say this was, was it 93 with Dog Eat Dog? Was it 93? I want to see, I want to say 93 at Wetlands. Yeah. So it was Dog Eat Dog, uh, Without a Cause was on the bill, and Ray, wanted, uh, Ray Maloon wanted me to, 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 to shoot it. And that was the first day I met Lenny. And it's funny, fast forward, I just find it funny now that I'm playing in a band with Lenny and Kevin, who I met at Bronin's, you know, it's just, it, it's, wild. It, it's, it's wild. And it's funny how I was a Down Low fan because I would see Down Low at CB's, I would see Down Low at uh, Bar Street Cafe. Yeah. At that time, Jason wasn't playing drums with them at that time. But, uh, and then Jason later on ended up playing drums for Down Low, which, you know, Plays uh, drums for uh, with us in, in Crazy Eddie. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, uh, just want to see if you, you know, have very many memories of or, you know, information to share about um, the BDC and your experience of the BDC. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, that would be when we would play with a lot of those. Well, a lot of those bands, like with the Go to Mentis dudes, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, when we yeah, played yeah. with them at Black Thorn, when we did the apartment show, um, when, when I was with the Wasted. Um, yeah, you know, we, 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 we knew the guys. We used to hang out with them. Um, you know, cool. It was just a thing that we had when we would do, when we uh, play shows together or whatever. Yeah, sure, you know? sure, sure. We wasn't really 
I, I knew all the guys. We knew the guys. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, sure. That's what it was. Me, Rui, Frankie, Jesse. You know, we, we knew all of them. You know, it's funny because when I was at the Wasted, we, we were like the odd, you know. That's right. Because that's right. everybody were forming metal and hardcore, and here we are playing punk and oi music. That's right. You know, so we were more like the odd, you know. But we knew all those guys, yeah, and they yeah, were all yeah. mad cool. Yeah. And we'll play with them. We'll hang out with them and do shows together with them and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I think, um, I think like Tito was like one of the main people involved. Right. I think they used to have meetings at his house. The people who were really, really Right, involved, right, you know? right, 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 um, right. But yeah, and I think I think Hellbound was in a similar situation as The Wasted, where they were a little bit outliers, although they were still... Right, right. Speaking of them. Hellbound, I might have something from Hellbound. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think I do. I'm not sure. Damn, I had, damn, I, I know I had the tape. Give me one second. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Let me see. Nah, I ain't bring it with me. I wish I did. But I do have Hellbound's cassette. Transcend the Flesh. Right, that's the one. That's the one. Visions, I yes, think that's the one. one. That's yeah, the one yeah, that I have. Yeah, 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 man. I, I wish I had it, but... Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't bring it with me. Darn it! Yeah, I don't have it with me. Yeah. But I got that through a kid in high school. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I thought I had it with me, and I don't. But um, let's go back to Train Depot. Yes, yes. All right, yes. let's go back to Train Depot. One particular night, I remember passing by Train Depot because I still see a lot of um white girls from that area, a bunch of uh -huh. Italian chicks. And I remember one night I'm passing by Train Depot, and I smell weed. I'm like, like that. And I see a big smog coming out of a car. And I see this one dude come out. I'm like, yo, he looks familiar. And you know who ended up being? The guys from Death Angel. Oh. But at that time, they were going by the name of the, or the organization. Wow. And they were playing the train depot that day. I didn't go, I didn't mean to, I didn't, uh, uh, had the chance to go in. Damn. Wow. But, uh, uh, they were playing that night and they were there smoking weed in front of the train depot in a car. <laughs> and it was the Death Angel guys. But at that time, they were going under the name of the organization. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's some pretty big bands that played, aside from the Bronx bands. I saw big. Murphy's Law yep. at the train depot. Yep. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a band called Out of Line from Queens. Uh -huh. And Out of Line had uh, uh, Slayer's guitar tech, Warren. Oh. Warren. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure, He sure. played bass. And that particular show, uh, I think No Redeemer Social Valley was supposed to play. And the drummer didn't show up. So I believe certain members of District 9. Filled in, huh? And No Redeeming, uh, Social Value, went on stage, did a couple of shows to the point where No Redeeming got butt-ass oh, naked yes, yes, yes. And, what, <laughs> and whatnot. Oh, man, that shit was crazy. I have it on video. Unfortunately, um, I need to, I want to put it up, but I need to censor out, yeah. you know, butt cheeks and whatnot, you know? And that happened at the Train Depot. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Close Call played at Train Depot. I got to see them there. Yeah. Uh, Blackout. I got to play with Blackout uh, at the Train Depot with The Wasted. Um, who else I got to see at uh, at the freaking Train Depot? I remember the, the, the owner was a short little dude, if I'm not mistaken. And at the time when I saw Murphy's Law play there, Jimmy Gestapo, Jimmy G, had like a a, 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 a cast on his leg uh, okay, okay. at that time. Uh, who else did I see at the train depot? I think I saw Cold Front. Oh, okay. Cold Front, yeah, wow. which had another bronze guy, Lou Medina, Lou Medina, who plays drums now in Fahrenheit 4 or right. uh, 1. Shout out That's to right. Lou Medina. A bron another bronze guy. He played with... um. Think all out war, 
uh, Crown of Thorns, wow. King's Bounty. He played with great, 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 great fucking drummer. Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. Uh, who else have I seen at Train Depot, man? I think that's about it. I've seen other, other bands in Train Depot. But uh, yeah, Blackout, uh, Murphy's Law, a um, bunch of bands. So I, I got to play there with Wasted, yeah. and I got to uh, see seen a lot of shows at Train Depot as well. Wow. Yeah. There was another spot not too far from Train Depot on the same street as Music Unlimited called oh. Gleason's. Yes, 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 yes. Gleason's. Yes. And Gio used to book there. That's right, that's right. I got to see... Uh, Al- Alekin's Gun, which features Jessica Pimentel oh, from that oh, show Orange is a New Black. Of course, yeah. And yeah, she yeah, sings yeah. for that band, and they played Gleason's. Uh huh. And I got to see them there. Wow. Yeah. Jessica Pimentel that played in uh, Alekin's Gun, they played, uh, they played Gleason's, and I want to say Demise played that show too. I see. And Geo booked that show. Ah, I see. And yeah. I think I think Billy Club Sandwich played at that venue before uh, at one point. Yeah. Um, also, I saw I got to see Billy Club Sandwich at uh, Music Unlimited because Music Unlimited oh, would do shows there I'm too. Of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Music Unlimited. Place. So yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah. Music Unlimited. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because I remember exactly. seeing Billy Club Sandwich and Walter's band who played in Inhuman, uh-huh. another Bronx guy. He also played with a band called Unrelenting Force that got to play with another thrash uh, band, Demolition Hammer. Ah, yes, I think you. I think I saw you had a, yeah, a sticker. Yeah, I have or a Look sticker. As a matter of fact, bam! Look at that. Yep, legendary band. There. Bronx. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. I forgot the drummer, the original drummer's name. He passed Many away. Days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, here's another sticker I didn't get to show you guys of Abject. I drew this, oh, wow. as a matter of fact. That. Yeah. That's another draw, uh, sticker from Abject that I drew. Wow. Yeah. So, um, where we at? So, yeah, Gleason's was another spot that they would do, uh, they would book shows. I not see. too far from the train depot. I see. Yeah. I see. On East Chester, I believe it was. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Because uh, East Chester, that's where Music Unlimited was at. Yeah. Right across the street from Albert Einstein Hospital. That's right. Which is crazy. My daughter was born in Albert Einstein oh, wow. Hospital. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, right across the street from Music Unlimited. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, as is clear from, uh, you know, the very small part of your collection that you brought today, you're definitely, uh, I think, you know, the, the, the Bronx historian when it comes to uh, all yeah, it's of a lo- Yeah, it's and, a lo- you know, these... Bands are from the Bronx, or they have Bronx... Some type of connection. Right, right. Another one that I wanted to show off was BAM, which this is the almighty irate. Aha, uh-huh. look at that. Yep. Uh-huh. Oh, there it is. Shout wow. out to the irate guys. Absolutely. A.K.A. Iraq. A.K.A. <laughs> Iraq. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. That's Another, right. Another uh, Bronx bass band. It's funny because Phil, I believe, was on Kingsbridge, and I lived on University on Kingsbridge. Oh, yeah, I was, okay. at, I was on West 190th and 192nd in Kingsbridge, yeah. and he was a little bit further down, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I could yeah, be yeah. wrong. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, and I think, I think you also, maybe right before COVID, you were starting to work on a documentary. Do you want to talk about that some? Yeah, yeah. I, basically, I wanted to do something like what you're doing. Yeah. And then COVID hit. Absolutely. But I wanted to put something together of Bronx, metal, hardcore, and punk. Absolutely. And uh, basically just get what you're doing. That's what I wanted to do. But then COVID hit. And, um, and then I was like, eh. And then after the whole COVID thing, you know, and that I had the Crazy Eddie thing doing, and that would sure. work and and stuff. And then I just didn't, you know, I didn't have the time, and I really didn't um, get into it. Sure, but that sure. was something that it was in the works that I wanted to do. Sure. Which was basically like something that uh, on, on on what you're doing. Sure. And whatever. But yeah, and then I just I never got got to do it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But you you do have like you know. So many amazing recordings, like I mean, yeah, you, you got you got the the record of. I mean, that's one of the this. reasons why I, I started uh, Hood TV. 
you know, th this goes back to the Chippewa Club. Yeah. And, you know, now, you know, these kids got it good. All they got to do now is whip this out. That's right. Their cell phone. But at that time, it was hard. You know, you had a camcorder that was this freaking size, and I would carry it with me on a, on a messenger bag, <laughs> hopping on the D train, 4 train, going downtown. Because at that time, a lot of the shows were mostly in Manhattan. That's right. That's Not right. like now that it's Brooklyn, Queens, Brooklyn, Queens. Um, going downtown to the village, going to CB's, going to the, the Lion's Den, going to Wetlands, going to ABC No Rio, going to the Continental and record all these bands on an actual camcorder. Amazing. And then it sucks because when the battery would die, I would have to put the charger that was a, it was like a two bricks. <laughs> so having that on your shoulder, you know, and then, you know, half hour sets with bands and sometimes I would record five bands and with that pain and with the, sometimes the battery would die, I would have to find an outlet that I would charge, so I would also bring an extension cord oh that I would have to plug in, put the battery adapter, put it on my camcorder, and shoot these bands with the big VHS camcorder. Little by little, I'm digitizing a lot of the stuff that I um, that I have on, on on videotape, and I'm putting it up on my uh, on my YouTube channel, which is Chucky Brown's Hood TV. I call it Hood TV because I've been doing it from. The camcorder days to the flip phone days. So you're going to see footage from the flip phone, you know, grainy, all fucked up. Hence the name Hood TV uh -huh. and whatnot. And um, I've been, I have tons of stuff on my channel that I've been doing from, I want to say, 92 to now. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing yeah. labor that you put yeah. in all this years. Yeah, man. Yeah. But um, the the Metal Madness one show is on there. The Metal Madness two show is on there. You're gonna see Train Depot shows on there. Right. You're gonna see uh, even the stuff from downtown. I uh, I would record a lot of stuff at CBS. Uh, I got footage of the casualties. I got footage of um, uh, uh, a bunch of stuff, man. A bunch of stuff. Uh, at Coney Island High. Uh -huh. I would record from Coney Island High. Uh, I even shot the Ramones. Wow. I shot the Ramones at Coney Island High. Wow. Back in, I want to say, 96. Okay. 96, yeah. Incredible. And stuff like that. And those would be a lot of the shows that me and Rui from The Wasted would, would go to. I see. Yeah. I see. As a matter of fact, I got, in 96, I got to see uh, The Sex Pistols. Oh, you said The reunion not... show. Oh, I see. Of That's course, with no Sid Vicious. Sure, sure. But, um... One of the best shows that I went to, man. I Holy bet. shit, man. Was that a lot of fun. Um, and it's funny because at that show, I saw this chick that was in the Pulp Fiction film. Uma Thurman. Oh, yeah. She was there, huh? She was there. Behind the... I forgot the bass player's name. Behind the... The, 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 the whole... The, the bass player's rack. They're chilling in the cut. <laughs> on stage. I was like, oh, shit. But great show. They played with um, Stabbing Westward and Gravity uh, Gravity Kills or some shit like that. And that was at that was at the Roseland. Yeah. And that was on uh, I got it right here. That was on uh, and when was that? August 9, 1996. I see. Stabbing Westward and Gravity Kills. I see. Stabbing Westward were, were kind of like a little industrial. That's why I was huh. like, really? They're on the bill? Yeah. And stuff like that? Yeah. Yep. Wow. At the Roseland. It's funny, going back to the Academy show. Yeah. Uh, I went twice to the Academy. The Academy was, I believe, in West 43rd Street. I remember one day, uh, uh, Sepultura was playing. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Joe Rampage about it. So Joe Rampage goes, you know what? Let's go to that show. The only thing, meet me after work at Bronian's and we'll go together. Yeah. So I was like, all right, bet. Um, and I remember him telling me, we're going to go in style. I'm like, <laughs> all right, whatever. So I go to Bronian's. He comes out of work. And a limo pulls up. <laughs> Fucking no Joe Rampage got a fucking limo, and we go to the Sepultura show in a fucking limo. Oh my I remember God. he was there with his homeboy. He was a ma he was a mailman, 
And after work, he was in his mailman uniform and he went with the sh- to the show with us <laughs> at the separate tour show. I was like, what the fuck? That was December 13, 1993. And it was Sepultura, <clears throat> the original lineup, yeah. Fudge Tunnel, and Clutch. Wow. 1993. And we, sh- and, we sh- and we rolled up in a limo. And I remember us running up and there was a line. And you see all these metalheads like, what the fuck are these motherfuckers? <laughs> these motherfuckers coming to show in a goddamn limo. Oh like, what the God. fuck? And it was one of those classic limos yeah, and yeah. shit. But, yo, man, we had a fun, fl- uh, we, we had, we, we, we had fun man. Hilarious. We had a blast. Wow. And that was Joe Rampage. And we went out there in a fucking limo to see Sepultura. <laughs> yeah, man. The original lineup. Wow. At the Academy wow. venue. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Wow. That um, was cool. So, I, I have a, a question, you know, that I'm sure you're familiar with that I ask at the end of these. But before we get there, just want to see if there's other things you want to share. Anything that we haven't covered so far. Um, and obviously, if there's more that you think of later, we can record some more. But at this point, if there's anything else you want to share. Um, as Bronx-wise, I still go to uh, shows in the Bronx. Yeah. I kept on going to to uh, shows in the Bronx. I always had this thing that when I hear there's a show in the Bronx, but if it's metal, punk, and hardcore, I was in there like fucking swimwear. <laughs> Down the line, I found a place up in Throg's Neck called Alfie's Place. Yes. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm in Throg's Neck. <laughs> and, but before that, there was another spot in Hunt's Point called The Point. Oh, yes, of course, of course, of course. And I would go out there, and I believe Adam Fashler had, and, his, and his wife had some input in that, oh, if I'm not mistaken. I see. Because I, see, I, I found see. out about that during the MySpace era. I see. Yeah, during the MySpace era. And during that time, that was when, like, uh, OHR, uh, only Hell Remains oh, was Hell big sure, sure, sure. and stuff like that. Because I remember seeing them out there. Um... I remember seeing, I think, Walter's band, Everything's Ruined, uh, a bunch of bands, another band, of, I think, from Jersey called Knuckle Up, I seen, and that was all in Hunt's Point. I see, I see, right. I see. Fast forward after Hunt's Point, I find this place, Alfie's Place, uh-huh. in, Throg's, in Throg's Neck, and shout out to Davey Hooligan, the singer of Inziguri, and he was booking shows there. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, I believe, one of the guys from a band called 245, if I'm not mistaken. I see. I'm not sure. Um, so I will hop on the 40 or the 42 bus from the first stop to that long-ass uh, drive <laughs> down Trema, passing Tattoo Scene and all that, passing uh-huh. the hood part of Trema into the nice part of Trema. <laughs> All the way till I get to the fucking Alfie's place. <laughs> yeah. And Alfie's place, I seen a lot of bands. I actually shot Billy Club Sandwich. Yeah, that's right. And they Candiria like, yeah. uh-huh, uh-huh. there at Alfie's place. Yeah. And cool spot, cool little spot. I know. All right, and, um, to Alfie's place. <laughs> yeah. Two members of District 9 got to play there, which was Lenny B and C's. Uh-huh. They had a blues project called Wolf and Waters. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they did uh, some blues thing at Alfie's place. Wow. That I also shot. And you'll be able wow. to find that on YouTube. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I saw a bunch of bands uh, there. I, I got to see um, The Last Stand, which features Mike Scandato. At uh, there, uh, who else got to play there? A bunch of bands that I can't fucking think right now, dude. Um, and that was another spot. There was also another spot in the South Bronx called La Ungla. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. The before. Jungle. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, that was in Third Avenue, right down the block from the old courthouse. Sure. You know the courthouse that has like a statue in the front? I believe they filmed a movie called uh, Vampires, Vampires in the Bronx. Yep, that's right, that's or right. something that that's like on Netflix. The Vampire Headquarters. Uh, around Vampire that Vampire. section. Yeah. And uh, I, I would go to to show there as well, uh, punk shows and metal shows uh-huh, uh-huh. at uh, at La Ungla. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Wow. Uh, what was another spot in the Bronx that I went? There was another spot called Club La Rumba. 
Yes. That was on Carter. Carter Avenue or Carter Street. Not too far from, you know, Frank Sporting Goods? Yeah, 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 yeah. Frank Sporting Goods on... What's that street? Is it Tremont? Yeah, it's on Tremont. It's on yeah, Tremont? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Right up the block. I think it was in the Fever. Was there in the 80s? I don't know. I could be wrong. Well, Club La Rumba was an upstairs spot. I think Frankie from uh, Go to Mantis lived around that area. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. That's and right. I got to see a Mexican punk band called Acides. Uh, Acides. And I got to see them play uh, Club La Rumba. Wow. And on that same day, I believe there was a, a black metal band called Night Right. Night Right. Night huh? Right that played that show. And it's funny because I got to see Night Right at Alfie's place too. Oh, they played wow. Alfie's place, Night Right, and they were black metal. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so every time I, I hear of a, a Bronx show, I always make sure to go. Yeah. Back in the, uh, I want to say 2014-ish, maybe, whatever, they, there was an organization, uh, organization called Hydropunk. Okay, okay. Yeah. And they would throw shows in a backyard. This was by like the two and the five train in I East see. 180th. I see. And there was a chick and her brother that would do these shows called Hydropunk. And then they would do shows on Jerome. and But it was a cool little organization that would throw oh. hip-hop and trap shows and, and, and punk and hardcore shows. I think... I think it's they, got her name. I, I, did, I, I, think, I think they... I think she just came out with a photograph book. Like yeah, she, she, does, she, from, she does photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my, my friend Latina, showed me... I forgot me. her name. Yeah. Monica, I forgot her name. But she was part of that organization. Ah, I see, I her see. Her and her brother. Wow. They started doing backyard shows. And then from there, they would uh, have these little halls or whatever. And they would do shows like in Jerome and in different parts within the Bronx. Wow. By wow. like the two and five train area. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, clearly all, all of this history from the 90s has continued. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even like, to like, to like to, now. Until today, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sad that there's not a... A lot of places in the Bronx yeah, to the play now, is the, is the you know. Problem, I think yeah. the last show I went to in the Bronx was probably maybe La Ungla. Yeah, I think that might have been the in last Third Avenue, the last venue, or the yeah. last stable venue. And I think the 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 guy that used to own that place was a short little Mexican dude, if I'm not mistaken. And now he does because he would do a lot of like. Spanish rock and roll uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, shows. And then every once in a while, he'll have metal hardcore shows. Yeah, sure, sure. And stuff like that. And um, unfortunately, they, they closed down. I think that place had like one exit. Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of one exit, once upon a time, I used to live on Sunner Boulevard in East Tremont, uh -huh. which was maybe a good two blocks away from the Happy Land Club. Oh, That oh, had man. one exit. Yep. With That's the right. 87 people that I had know, died. I, I used to terrible. live a good two blocks away from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, went, and whatnot. Yeah. And it's funny because there, that's where I discovered the radio station that I spoke with earlier, Z-Rock 1480 AM. I see. And um, Crucial Chaos yeah. 89.1. I see. And also WSOU 89.5. Uh -huh. And at that time, I was living on Southern Boulevard right off of East Trema. Yeah. Not too far from the Happy Land Club. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, the fi final question that is always fun to see what people think is, do you think there's a, a Bronx, um, you know, metal or heavy or hardcore oh, or punk absolutely, sound? Absolutely, man. And how you would you describe would, it? You would hear it in almost every fucking band. Yeah. I don't care if you're playing black metal. I don't care if you're playing pop punk ska, whatever. You're always gonna hear that Bronx sound, whether if these guys say it or not. Yeah. For example, I mean, I could pull this out. This has Bronx uh, all uh, over it. Has it. Bronx all over all it. All over it. I know. I could pull this out. It has the Bronx all over it. Yeah. I could pull out fucking um Fahrenheit. Yup. It got Bronx all over it. You listen to Irate, you could hear Bronx all over, all over it. You could hear fucking Steve Tyler that lived in the Bronx. Yep, and you could right. hear that groove with Steven Tyler. Fucking Demolition Hammer. 
Um, it's funny because a lot of this stuff, like, I was listening to Go to Mensis. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling Barry, I was like, dude, you're rhyming yep. in some of these songs. Yeah, of course he's growling, but he's rhyming that has that Bronx influence, you know? I know. Um, what else? Uh, to even the drums, to, to be... Uh, what's his name? That drummer that used to be the drummer for the B fifty twos and Tina Turner. Oh, uh, 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 Gary G Man yeah. Sullivan. Yeah. You could hear in his drums Absolutely. and his drumming, which he played in Smoke and Mirrors. Uh -huh. That I believe Gary Mutley uh, booked them booked at Lehman for Lehman College. I believe, yep, if I'm right. not mistaken. Yep, that's right. You could hear it in his drumming. Anthrax with Charlie Benante and Frank Bello, which I ended up meeting Frank Bello when I worked in Bradley's. Ah. I ended up meeting, he came in one day and uh, I used to work in the toy department. Yeah. And he came in one day looking for Star Wars action figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I met him in Bradley's and I used to work there. But anyway, going back to the Bronx thing, uh, for example, District 9 with Puerto Rican Mike. When he, when he when he gets into his flow, I know, I know. Bronx, I know. Beautiful. You know what I mean? Fucking um, proof of purchase. Yep. Uh, who else? Fucking um, Fahrenheit, uh, uh, Mando. When he gets in his into his thing. That's right. Bronx, That's Kevin. Right. When he's playing bass in Fahrenheit, Bronx. So most definitely, most definitely. I don't care what genre with it within rock and metal music. Yeah, that's right. That Bronx is just gonna come out of you naturally. Yeah, sure. You know what I'm saying? And that's sure. just for if you do listen to hip hop rap, even if you don't, you're still hearing it. You do. Yep. It, out in the around. street or whatever, so it's gonna come out naturally. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. That's right. So yeah, absolutely. The Bronx has a a, a, a sound in you, and you can hear it. Yes, you can you fucking can. hear it with all these fucking bands. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Again, e even. Even in the band, uh, Terminal Buzz, the punk band, yes, sir. Uh, the Truant, you hear the Bronx in that shit too. You know what I'm saying? So anybody that denies that, no, they're bugging out, man. <laughs> the Bronx definitely has a fucking, uh, yeah. you know, it's just that groove within drums, the bass, guitar, the vocals, how you deliver it, you know? So yeah, absolutely. fucking absolutely. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Um, and hey, take, take it from the man who... Who filmed and recorded yeah, man. so many of the shows? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. I was there, man. I got the receipts. You know, that's I was right. there. I was that's there. Right. I have them all car archived, man. That's right. That's right. Well, Chuck, this was incredible, incredibly rich as far as, you know, you just have so much history living inside you. So, really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for time. having me, man. Yeah, no doubt, man. Um, um, I'm just happy to say that, uh, you know, thank you for having me. Thank you for documenting all these uh, other musicians and bands that's been coming out, you know, and a lot more, you know. Uh, I love the Bronx. I was born in the Bronx. I lost my virginity in the Bronx. I saw a fucking UFO, true story. I seen a UFO in the Bronx. Uh... Went to school, did graffiti, had got arrested, everything, you name it, in the motherfucking Bronx. Uh -huh. This is my home. It's in my heart. You know, it's part of me. You know, I lived everywhere. I lived on Bathgate. I lived on Arthur Avenue. I lived on Southern Boulevard. I lived on University Avenue, Beach Avenue. The Bronx, man, it's the stopping grounds. Yeah. You know, br the Bronx is like the, like the ugly stepchild within the five boroughs. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the BX, that's what it is, you know, the boogie down, you know. This ain't New York, this is the Bronx, that's right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a B Street, you know what I mean? That's right, that's right. Wear it up, <laughs> yes sir. Well, thanks so much, Chucky. No doubt, baby.